All right, dirty boy. You ready for another one? Another Civico? Nah, nah, we'll keep it on that one for now. Chill, 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 chill. (laughs) All right, we're rolling, dude. What the fuck do you want to talk about, Dunham? Bobby, I don't know what I want to talk about, but I just honestly wanted to come (laughs) hang out with you. I'm here in Arizona, so, like, there's no other place I'd rather be than on this couch right now with you. Welcome a little trip over here, a little three-leg trip. A little trip. Trip's chilling. Denim's here. It's a good day. Uh, I don't know. Welcome to, welcome to my, my my couch. I'm going to try not to cuss, but I already did. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> uh, what are you doing in Arizona? Um, here in Arizona, building a Habit Burger. And if anybody lives in Arizona and they've been to Habit Burger before, I probably built it. That's kind of cool. It's cool to say. It's cool to do. I mean, honestly, I love working this job because it sends me all over. I mean, I've been to Jersey, Washington, Oregon, like uh, all over. Like (laughs) they send me everywhere. It's random as hell. I'll get a text message and then boom, five days later, I'm in another state building a Habit Burger. It's all Habit Burgers? Yeah. Any other restaurants? Uh, I've done California Fish Grill and I've done like Postino's. Postino's. Yeah, you've seen Postino's. I I hate Postino's. I hate Postino's. Why? (laughs) All the people that run that thing don't know what they're doing. (laughs) That's fair. They got good wine and bruschetta though. Oh, I'm sure. I've never been to an open one. (laughs) (laughs) I only build it and then walk right the hell out. You go into an empty building and then you look around and you say, okay, we need a bench here, a bench here, a bench here. Oh, no, that's all already planned out. It's bada boom, bada bing. Nice. And you just make the shit happen. Yeah, exactly. I kick it in. I grab these booths off a semi truck and then kick them in the spot and <laughs> shove a screw in it. Perfect, easy yeah. job. I, that's what I say. I mean, is yeah. that the is that your main gig or no? Uh, currently, yeah, that's my main gig. I just actually shut down my shop. Shit, Cox builds. No, dude, thirty five hundred dollars a month rent, and then they wanted four grand after that. So I was like, okay, okay, guys, <laughs> come on, I can't be doing all this alone. Damn, that's rough. Yeah, so um, the restaurant thing has been my main gig for years. Yeah. I've worked for this guy called Craig. He's big, bald, fucking, oh, 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 what are you doing? Oh, you don't do that. That kind of guy. <laughs> so he's guy. trained me, you know, real well. He's a total bulldog. Like, he'll walk into a job site and just kick dudes out of the way. Like, hey, you need to move all this right now. I'm coming in with big cabinets. I'm like, <laughs> Yeah, we're coming in with big cabinets, bro. <laughs> like, you guys definitely need to move this stuff. And I'm helping those guys move all their stuff. And, you know, it's fun. That is fun. Fucking A. Uh, I'm sorry to hear your store closed down because that's I was excited to talk about that. I mean, how long was your... It's cool. Is it Shitcox Builds and you reached out to this... How did Shitcox Builds start? We'll get to biking eventually, I'm sure. But I, I doubt it. <laughs> no, nah, I'm telling you we will, for sure. Uh, Shitcox Builds started, you know, from building fingerboard spots. No like shit. on accident. Nice. Building fingerboard spots was an accident. Let's be yeah. clear about that. But um, yeah, I built like this Allen wrench stand for my T handles. Yeah. Put it on top of my toolbox. It was just like a 10 stair hubba. You know, it had metric on one side, SAE on the other. Nice. 10 stair hubba with a rail down the center. Yeah. <laughs> and then I showed Eddie. Eddie was like, yo, you should definitely make fingerboard spots. I was like, what? Like, you think people would buy it? He's like, yeah. Huh. And actually, there's an event next week over in Huntington Beach. I live in Huntington Beach, so I was like, okay, bet. Yeah. I whipped up 10 spots like that day or the next day, took them to that event, sold out. Wow. Yeah, immediately I was like, oh, okay. When this was is this? Cool. Uh, I want to say it was like six years ago. Okay, sick. Something like that. I think on my shirt it says, well, no, I'm not on my shirt. <laughs> but <laughs> it's 20, oh, it does, yeah. Established 2016, dude. Nice. That's, Way I mean, back that's when. a good run for at least the brick and mortar. Oh, don't think it's I'm shut over. down. Yeah, yeah okay. I am shut down. The, we're just stopping the shop. Okay. Yeah, I just tried I tried to do the shop. I did 14 months owning a 2,000 square foot warehouse where I walked in every day at, you know, between 4 in the morning to 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Yeah. Walk in whenever I want, leave whenever I want. That's got to feel cool. Yeah, but I mean, I was there by myself. That so feel it's cool. like all the work is on me. Yeah. And, you know, I, yeah, I try to get my little brother involved. You know, I try to get my friends involved. Come over, help me do this shit. I'll pay you, whatever. Right. And, you know, it's just, it's not the same. I don't like doing stuff twice. And I honestly, I don't even like telling people what to do. Yeah. At all. <laughs> just give it back. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so yeah, it's like, they, they, you're doing it wrong. Give it back. I wish they would just come over and hang out and drink beer. But then when they do that, then I'm sitting there like, oh, all I want to do is drink beer. I'm not getting <laughs> shit done. So, 
yeah, for me, having the shop was kind of crazy. Like 2,000 square feet, I definitely don't need that. Yeah. It just turned into a massive storage facility. Dude. All for building little replicas. Dude, I didn't even build shit. <laughs> I didn't even build no replicas. Well, I built one thing for Hot Wheels. That's, yeah, I saw that. That was a big one. Yeah, that's That huge. was, like, kind of the main one I did. Maybe I did a couple other little things. Yeah. I, like, started this giant rip and dip piece, and I still have that to this day. <laughs> it's actually stuffed in my van right now. What did you, what, how did rip and dip start? I mean, uh, did they commission it? How did they start? Um, this one that I'm building currently is only because I already built one for them. And that one came to me just word of mouth. Like, nice, yeah. I think I built a couple trophies for vans, yep. like some of their contests, yeah. the vans open and, you know, some of the stuff that went down at the block in orange. And after that, yeah, I guess ripping it caught notice. It was like, yo, we need a little fingerboard park we, they started making fingerboards is what it was. Oh. And they saw maybe my Hollywood high piece or something that caught their eye and they, they hit me up and said they needed one. That's so sick, dude. <laughs> yeah, so I was in Sauce's backyard just laying that sucker out for months, dude. Huh. What, what did they want? Uh, they free reign, like just build us a little skate park. I was like, all right, cool. So I built like a little five by five square, it had a bowl, had a little couple staircases huh. and had like a suburban in the middle you could jump over it and That's a whole some different street world. rails it's crazy dude tiny concrete is crazy you're using concrete yes real concrete real wood tiny real steel. concrete you say that's funny yeah <laughs> tiny concrete <laughs> you like little tiny little blades to like smooth it out and shit get little this tiny steamroller get this dude when i pour that concrete i pour it like you know a half inch thick so yeah. in theory shouldn't take too long to dry right it's a half inch thick when I pour these things, it takes 10 hours <laughs> to dry because I, don't, <laughs> I didn't know what I was doing. I was using Portland cement, which is like just basically all plastic cement. Okay. There's nothing really to like hold it together. A, lo a lot of the guys are mixing in like this fiber mesh stuff. Okay. Which like f holds it all together, makes it form, makes it dry so faster, there's levels all to these this things. Tiny there's levels to this, shit. dude. I'm learning. I'm learning <laughs> on this tiny concrete stuff. But anyways... From my research, I figured out, like, okay, Portland is badass, and you're supposed to put sand in it to help it all bond together, but I never did that. I skipped that step. I'm just pouring a bag of concrete in this five-gallon bucket and mixing it up. I get this stuff spread out, half-inch thick, you know, kind of how I like it, but it takes 10 hours to massage a bowl <laughs> to, to the hardness that makes it, like, so I can finally hit it with sandpaper and clean it up. It sounds like you're using your hand. Are you like going? Like I do. This, yeah, I just, do this with my hand, but I got soup ladles too. Soup, soup ladles, ladles and nice. spoons. Yeah, dude. that makes sense. <laughs> That's I the move. That. Yeah. That's my trial. So I get in there with the soup ladle and just <laughs> rub that sucker forever. What a visual just picturing you in a big ass warehouse just in the center of it, building a tiny little finger. <laughs> <laughs> I was doing a lot of that building stuff at Sauce's house. Okay. In yeah. his backyard, dude. I lived there for seven or eight years. In his backyard? Not in his backyard. In his house. I started on his couch, <laughs> and then I moved to his mom's room. Nice. And then, yeah, I would just, I owned that With backyard. The mom? No, okay. dude. That's disrespectful. That's a crazy story. No, it's not disrespectful <laughs> at all. That's a crazy story, Sorry, though. Sucks. Like, um, when I first moved to California, I moved out with my mom, my dad, my little brother. We moved out in 2011 to California. And we moved into our buddy China Mike's house or China Mike's brother's house, which was a five bedroom, five bath that was going into foreclosure. But it was right by Huntington Beach High School. Okay. So I was all stoked. I was like, yeah. ooh, Huntington Beach, dude. Oh, all these girls, oh, it's gonna be sick. 2011, how old are you? Um, 16, 15-ish. Nah, probably 17. 17. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I still had to go to junior year and senior year. Okay. And I graduated at 17, so yeah, like 16. But anyways, we move into this little five bedroom, five bath mansion, and I'm fucking stoked. Yeah. And from from that house, I uh, wait. Fuck, what were we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Sauce's house. Yeah, Sauce's house. Okay. And Sauce's mom. So how I got to Sauce's mom's house? Okay, so we stayed in that little five bedroom bath, and then you know a couple years go by, shit's all cool. I'm already got all my BMX friends. From that McMansion, I pedaled over to B uh, Huntington Beach High School. Found three BMX kids first day. Made friends with them. They introduced me to Sauce. Nice. Fast forward years later, um, Sauce is like, let's go to Barcelona. I'm like, 
so down. Hell yeah. Three week trip. Sounds killer. Yeah. We all load up. It's like six of us. We go to Barcelona. But while I was going to Barcelona, I knew that my parents were about to move to Texas. So before we all left, like I took all my shit out of my room, put it in a storage unit. And then flew to Barcelona, knowing damn well I wasn't going to move to Texas. So yeah. I was like, okay. End of the Barcelona trip came up, and I was like, I'm not fucking leaving. I'm not fucking leaving. <laughs> and I stayed there in Barcelona for four months. And what? then came back to move to Sauce's couch. Nice. And then I stayed on his couch with Austin Augie. Yep. For, I think Austin Augie was there for like two day, or two months. Okay. And then Sauce finally booted him out, and then <laughs> it was just me on the couch. But every night we were rotating like couch floor, couch floor. <laughs> me no, and sure, him would yeah. switch, you know, because... That's Sucks, dude. Three people yeah. in one master bedroom. Yeah, damn. Sharing one bed, yeah. one bathroom. <laughs> dude, it was crazy. Huh? Where'd you move? So, like, you said your family moved here in 2011. Where'd you guys move from? Where'd you Tucson, family? Arizona. No shit. Yeah, I was here. I grew up in Tucson, Arizona. Nice. I was born in Oklahoma, but I grew up in Tucson, Arizona. Cool. Twelve so, years, dude. Damn, that's interesting. I didn't know that. Did no. you meet? Did you ride BMX when you lived in Tucson? Yeah. Did you yeah. meet any of the the boys? Did you go to premises? Was that a thing? Yeah, Sweet. Premises was just getting started when I was, like, moving out. Nice. I had just started loving to go downtown and riding street. I literally rode street, like, one or two times hmm. officially. In my mind, it was like, um, okay, I'm officially going to ride the street with some boys that rode street. Yeah. They were all at Premises, and they were like, hey, you guys want to go ride street? I was yeah. Like, that sounds cool. I mean, I, I, what do you mean, ride street? Like, what are we going to do? Oh, dude, we're just going to go cruise. Just cruise around. Yes, exactly. So I rode premises, you know, like three, four times before I moved out of Tucson. And, you know, on one or two of those times, we were downtown riding streets. So yeah. I fell in love with it right then and there. But That's what's up. unfortunately, I had to move to California, which actually turned to be a yeah, turned out to be really fortunate. Yeah, that's fire. <laughs> but yeah, I left all those homies back there. Shout out Dakota Brat. Yep. Shout out Kevin Praza. Yep. Kevin Praza literally taught me bar spins. At premises. Nice. Yeah. Fuck yeah. That's awesome. Small world. That's oh, wild. Yeah. I love to hear it. And then, uh, you, I mean, that's cr pretty crazy about the staying in Barcelona for four months when you're, how old were you? Was it years later or like same time? Like uh, 2015. 20, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, so like same time. Yeah. And then you're just like, fuck you, mom and dad, basically? No, I love my mom and dad more but, than anything. But you Dude, guys are moving to Texas? You know how much I love my mom and dad? You've seen my tattoos, <laughs> right? Mom. Shout out, mom. Yeah, check that one out. Mom. Shout out, Mom. Straight classic, and then the dad tattoo. Boom. Also the balls. straight classic. I love that. Yeah, no, I love them. Um, no, but you know what I'm I was saying, just like, like, there's no way I'm going to Texas right now when BMX is hot for me. All my friends are here in California. Like, this is land of opportunity, dude. There's yeah. no way I'm going to Texas right now. And I'm glad I didn't because, fuck. Yeah, then the... The ball started rolling. Yeah, the ball started rolling hardcore, yeah. dude. <laughs> like, I remember that Barcelona video. Like, stranger uh, shit. Common, common in BCN. Yeah. Is that a separate thing or a different trip? Uh, no, that's the one. That's the one. Yeah, that's the one I stayed for, and then after I actually filmed a stranger video. Nice. While I was out in there in Barcelona. Yeah, because I was there for so long, I was like, okay. I gotta do something. I gotta man. revisit that. Who'd you film that with? Fernando Gormarin. Nice. Gormarin. Yeah, the guy. You know. Him. Yeah. Film. Yeah, I know. Of course. <laughs> that's awesome, dude. Fuck yeah. I mean, I guess just tell me your fucking story. So it started starting at this uh, common BCN trip, and then, I mean, BMX wise, is that when that shit kind of started? Like, fuck, um, where do you even start? No, dude? I don't dude, even know where to start. With to this start shit. with me, <laughs> shit, you, I don't even you know. How'd you get into dude? bicycles, man? <laughs> <laughs> shit, I started in the backyard skating naked, and now here I am riding BMX with all my clothes. <laughs> skating naked. <laughs> <laughs> That's like one of Sasa's favorite stories. Because one time I slipped up and told him I was skating naked in my backyard. <laughs> nice. Just got home from high school and was like, boom, I'm skating naked. <laughs> yeah. I had a full-on skate park in my backyard in Arizona. It was nice. sick. That's pretty dope. Yeah, we had a, you know, classic, like, 1,500-square-foot house with a pool. And our garage was also 1,500 square feet. Wow. My dad custom-built this shit. He was nice. like, all I care about is my garage. <laughs> yeah. It could oh, fit, yeah. like, nine cars in this fucking <laughs> thing, dude. And the driveway in the front went down all hardcore, so it was perfect rolling, mega ramp rolling for my yep. fucking 1080 kicker at the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> little plastic ramp, dude. Yes. Dude, I grew up on a plastic ramp. Sick. Like, on a BMX bike? Or? Yeah. Okay. BMX bike, skate, scooter. All of it. Not rollerblades. I never got into that. <laughs> 
I tried, but fruit booters. It's just not that fun. Yeah, I, I tried it too. It is. It's I, so hard. It's different muscles, dude. It's like the side of your legs and shit. I didn't like that. You know? I just don't like falling on my ass. Yeah. But then I got into skating, and all I did was fall on my ass. <laughs> yeah. And now all I do is tuck and roll. So yeah. I, I don't. You're pretty good at bailing. I'll give you that. I love know? bailing. Um, you recently broke your neck, so I, I, we, could talk, <laughs> we could discuss bailing and breaking your neck. Uh, but yeah, I used to. I the whole reason I got into BMX was because I tried skating and I couldn't fucking figure it out. Like I was just like, I need to hold on to something. And then oh, dude, I was getting good, over. man. I only yeah, stairs? I was only in twelve stairs, what? board sliding, handrails and shit. Nice. Yeah, that's fire. Kick flipping off two foot ledges. What's the best trick you've ever done naked? Uh, you know, I I think I jumped the camel toe in my backyard naked. What's a camel toe? <laughs> I had this ramp that was shaped like this. <laughs> nice. It was what? like, you could just roll through it and pump as hard as you could, and then you'd go to the spine. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> dude. Oh, my garage. Okay, I was what telling you, it's got the mega I ramp rolling. I think I jumped rolling. the camel toe naked. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so my garage had that rolling in the front yard, but yeah. on the other side, it was about me. maybe 80 foot from the front garage door to the back garage door. You could drive through this garage, right? <laughs> <laughs> and then you would go through that back garage door. It was just like a single bay. And then boom, 10 foot wide driveway, 100 feet long, all the way to the back gate. That's, That's where all my part. shit was. Nice. Which now that I think about it, dude, I cannot believe my dad did that for me. That's homie. Like That's, I think about all cool the cars that, that I have and like <laughs> all that shit was in his way all the time. There's no way it wasn't, yeah. bro. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he built me this big old five stair rolling. You know, when you go to Home Depot and you're in the wood aisle and they make those little pre-made stair cutout mm -hmm. things. We got two of those, boom, made a five stair. And then on the side of it, there was like a foot wide roll in. Nice. And then it had a whole roll up and then like a, maybe like a six foot deck on top. So you could roll up, get ready to ollie that five stair. Nice. <laughs> and then after the five stair was a camel toe. Yeah, okay. And then a spine and then a quarter pipe. So you could turn around and come That's all the legit. way back. Dude, it was so fun. And then they all, are gone obviously um yeah yeah we ended up taking them to my buddy's house in catalina cool tyler yaris tyler yaris shout out tyler uh, <laughs> yeah shout out tyler for sure what's like what was your i mean i'm picturing you being like 13 years old riding these ramps in the house in tucson yeah 12 13 yeah. something like that what was like your taste of bmx and then when did that become your main shit dude i just i actually heard a story about this the other day my dad was telling me like i did not want the bmx bike at all it was you christmas didn't? time no <laughs> like i already had bikes i'd been there i've done that you yeah. know i i started out on a like a the dinos right yeah. yeah dude i had this one it was all blue and it had flames on it. it looked just like my dad's 57 chevy i was like oh this bike's sick yeah and i was taking that thing behind the walgreens by my house jumping off you know to me it seemed like it was like a three foot three foot cliff into this sand hill yeah I, I was doing, doing that shit, shit yeah. back in the day, right? Yeah. But then I got into skating, and all of a sudden, I didn't want nothing to do with bikes, yeah. right? But my brother, he was coming up. He's eight years behind me, right? Okay. So he's got to get a bike. He's got to try all that stuff. When Christmas rolls around, Santa Claus brings us a DK, uh, generally. Yep. And then I had some DK racing frame. It was like a 19 and a half inch top tube. It was <laughs> kind of a weird <laughs> deal. Tiny, yeah. Yeah, it was kind of a weird deal, but I ended up, you know... Just getting super into it like i was just kind of like at the end of middle school beginning of high school and my friends had dirt jumps behind their house and nice. i lived backed up to a sand wash so yeah. i was making jumps in and out of that wash and all the way to the walgreens it was Fuck by the yeah. house you know so it was just like friends you didn't like see a video did they pop a video in or like um or dvd's I, a thing at this point no because i mean i was into it you're young I, yeah I didn't, dude, I did not grow up watching BMX videos or like, dude, X Games, maybe, yeah. right? And even then, I didn't even know it was a real thing outside of X Games. Yeah. <laughs> like, I didn't even <laughs> consider the fact that these guys do this shit every day. Yeah. It was weird. But, um, yeah, fucking. You know what I mean, though? Like, when did it go from, like, dirt jumping and, like, how do you see tricks to learn? Like, is it just friends, like? Dude, I was out there you know doing I mean? bar twists. I, I had a mean bar twist. No footer, one footer. Come on. Come on, man. <laughs> but I was also old enough to where, you know, I knew that there's no footers and no handers and stuff. Yeah. I had already been riding uh, dirt bikes yeah. and, you know, doing some other weird stuff. I'm going to be like the best freestyler in the world. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> All right, I, this is a good good time to good time to show the people. Yeah, origins. so this is where I started, dude. I yeah. am 
eight years old in the footage that you're about to see. And this is me riding dirt bikes. This is a young buck. I knew one trick. Fucking no hander. All right. That's not it. But this is it. That's not it also. But, I mean, let's, Check admire, that out. let's admire that picture right there. Damn I rode for this freestyle no crew hander. called Chapter 11. If you know, you know. This is some 2003 freestyle stuff. Freestyle crew, Chapter 11. Look at this guy. Eight years old. <laughs> four foot one. <laughs> 60 pounds. Dude, I weighed nothing. Hobbies riding my scooter, PS2, snowboarding, and quotes, hanging with the boys. That's right. <laughs> you got your turn right. All right, <laughs> let's get this. Here we go. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to record some of this for Chris. Okay, do I need to turn it? Like <laughs> Whose voices are we hearing? The, uh, this is my girlfriend. She was researching this really heavy, so we could show it today. A shout out to girlfriend. Mm -hmm. Shout out Ariana. Ariana. Lover. Look at the music, dude. Look, so at eight years old, my dad was filming me and telling me That's I could do all this. It's a solid no hander. So I had some tricks, you know, yeah. I knew I knew some tricks in my mind. Eight years old. Ripping. <laughs> oh, I almost died right there. This is like ingrained in your like existence almost. Yeah, this is in my DNA basically. Yeah. This is 2003. That's so nuts. Me riding with my buddy Jason Ebel and the That's late great you. Arlen Vandemark. I wish it was me. <laughs> Ooh, mean one handed look back. That's you. You got the no handers. Just look at this fucking guy. No way. Been riding for four years, been doing freestyle for one. Yep. So I guess I started at four. <laughs> <laughs> I did though. I mean, I remember riding riding dirt bikes behind that Walgreens. It was by my house. It yeah. was like a quarter mile from my back gate to the Walgreens front door. So yeah. I was in that Walgreens every single day. Shout out Harriet. I still remember her Harriet. to this day. Harriet worked Harriet at that Walgreens. Walgreens Dude, <laughs> best Harriet. lady. My, she would sell my dad beer oh, all the time, cool. and I'd always be there, you know, with my pack of gummy bears or whatever. <laughs> and there was like a liquor section and then a a it's normal this kid section. Who's going into Walgreens? <laughs> like yeah, exactly. This, this sideways hat, Walgreens. dude. Yeah. Sideways hat with two spikes in the side holes, and Boom. every day Miss Penny would make me take them out. <laughs> in third grade, I'm pulling up with spikes in my hat, and they're every day making me take them out. Dan, um, take take your take your yeah, horns exactly. Out. It wasn't take your hat off. It was like <laughs> literally take your spikes out of your hat. You cannot have that. Take and also, you can't out. wear your hat in class. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like. Argh. Losing it. Oh shit! But I, I quoted this. He showed it to me earlier. Let's see. He's ripping, dude. Oh, here, here we go. Is there? Another? I think it's the next one. Okay. Dude, on interviews, at eight years old. Dude, on camera. What was this for? Like, what was this? This was for? a sponsor me tape that my nice. dad had made for me. You know, we were trying to go big with it, but. Man, your dad's the shit. My dad actually is the shit. Love him. Right, here we go. Dude, check this clip out. Be the best freestyle ever. Brah. Let's go. Yeah, I can't believe my dad did this shit for me. He was taking me to this compound, you know, twice a week, three times a week, four times a week. As this often as those other guys were there. Oh, yeah, check out that one hander lantern. <laughs> so, do you think that your motocross background has helped? For your information, does that phone number still work? Uh, yeah, it goes to my dad's friend. I, what's his name? I don't know. I don't know his name, but I know he wiped a booger in my dad's seat, and he doesn't like him anymore. <laughs> he went like this and fucking flicked a booger Ooh, in his truck, and he's not having it. Disrespectful. Well, nobody do anything with that phone number when you're watching this. Okay. <clears throat> and we're back. Yeah, but that's where it started, dude. Like, yeah. on the dirt bike, behind that Walgreens, on a PW50, shooting the sand wash. <laughs> you're a very... Uh, you're one of a, you're one in a million denim doing fucking no handers and saying you're gonna be the best freestyle motocross ever. <laughs> That's fire. It's all my dad's words. So Put him right in my that, little uh, eight-year-old mouth. Did, yeah, dad was coaching you. Oh, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> you can see me looking at him in the camera. I'm what like this. Say I next? say something to the camera and then I'm like, <laughs> did I say it right? <laughs> I'm eight years old, dude. I don't know what I'm That's doing. So wholesome. I love it. I mean, I, I was like, having fun, no doubt. Did anything come of that? Uh, I that green bike Chapter that you 11? see me already riding. Yeah. I got that one for free. Nice. Don't know how. So you. But my dad says I got that one for free. You got sponsored in motocross, kind of. Borderline. Borderline sponsor. Yeah, it's what my dad says. Yeah. You <laughs> I it. I don't know. Denim Cox, baby. Uh, 
I was asking, does that shit, do you think it, I think it does. That bike control from motocross go into your BMX? Mm -hmm. I think the BMX plays into the motocross, honestly. Like a lot. Because you were BMXing at that time, too? Or no? Like, well, what do you mean when you say Then, it? dude, then is irrelevant to, like, any level of skill. I did not have no skill back then. Dude, okay. My dad is literally standing at the bottom of the ramp going like this. Wham, wham, wham. Like, doing a hand signal to give it more gas <laughs> as I'm riding at this 60-foot gap. Like, I don't know the speed, but yeah. he's, like, doing this shit to coach me. <laughs> Bro, how do I go faster? <laughs> and one time I went so fast that I jumped over the entire landing ramp, landed flat, and broke my leg. Oh, hell. That's gonna happen. I didn't even though. fall. You're I made. just like literally just landed flat so hard that my little four foot one leg broke. Ay, ay, ay. But like you're family. made of rubber when you're a baby. That's why I was talking to Fu at Epic and he was like, that's why kids can learn. That's why I made Max learn all these tricks because he's just young and stupid. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like you're just young and For stupid. For sure. Like, yeah, go faster. And Dude, you're like, okay. <laughs> we <laughs> used to always call Max an RC car. Like he could go as fast as he want, fall, crash, and, and get, get up. Get right back up. Yeah. Yeah. That's when you need to be doing it. Um, I don't know. Like, do you, when you see when you have kids, I could tell. I already know your answer. When you have kids, are you gonna push them into you know skating, BMX, and I mean, I'll be doing it if they want to follow me. And they can, yeah. you know. But dude, what like a rip, all kids want to rebel against their parents? So like, you're a cool dad, and you you can do all this shit, and then the, the kids just like, screw you, dad. I want to play organized team sports. You know, I I'll love be like, volleyball. Okay, well, let's get into some football, bro. Yeah. <laughs> no, he's like, I'll watch you get tackled all day. I want to play racquetball, dad. <laughs> all right, know? I'll. Just Bank your ass right now. Let's go. I'll, fucking, <laughs> I'll win this game of racquetball right that's, now. That's good dad shit. Yeah, you want to play racquetball? Let's do it. Um, all right. I'll try not to hit you with a ball. <laughs> <laughs> what would, what's the worst sport that you would want your son to get into? Mm, lacrosse. Lacrosse, yeah. I don't know. There's some douchebags there. Yeah, definitely some douches. Some douche canoes in lacrosse. I'm trying to think. If, if my son just became super passionate about... Fucking anything, man. The real answer is I would support him in whatever he does. Do you have so, a kid yeah. or something? No. Are you worried about having a kid or something? No. I'm just thinking about the future, though. Oh, I'm so scared of the future. I don't <laughs> want no kid, bro. I'm so scared. I know I'd kill it, but... Give it time. Uh, I'm, not, I'm so not ready for that. How old are you? I'm 28 years old now. 28. Can't even believe it. I was just telling you before, like, it still feels like you're uh, 21. You're, st you're always going to be common crew to me, and which is like when I was, I don't know, 23, 24... Sabrosa, those days, Common Crew's coming up, and Denim Cox, you know, Denim Ooh. Cox. Yeah, let's talk about the OG Common Crew days. How did that all... The good old days. How did that come together? Tell me about the good old days. The good old days. So, like I was saying before, how I met those three kids at Huntington yeah. Beach High School, and then they introduced me to all the other guys. Those other guys were Sauce, Francis Castro, and Ethan, and... Yeah, I don't know who else was involved at that point. I think... Everyone was involved, but I kind of like slowly got to meet everybody. Mm -hmm. These are kind of like the first guys that I met. Sauce, definitely the first guy I met. That's and I clicked with him right away. Yeah. He had dirt bikes in the garage. Yeah. And he liked old cars. So like me boom. and him were, boom, best buds right away. Always fucking with he's each other. He's liked old cars since back then? Like, yes. Uh, cool. Dude, he's loved old cars. His first car is a 1953 Mercury. Huh. Good for him, dude. Super gangster, what two door. He just sauce. recently sold it re uh, like a couple years ago. Where's my jewel? Uh, it's under your ass. Right, I mean, that's where it was oh, last time you. I saw it. <laughs> we love sauce. Okay, that's a good good person to meet first. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Has he always been... I, there's no way he's been different. Like, he's just been charismatic. Nah, yeah, he's sauce. been the same wheeling, yeah. dealing, yeah. son of a bitch he's ever got, since. That thing we were one. talking about, that entrepreneurship shit. Like, he's, like you said, your guy Craig started when he was seven. And yeah. Just some, some people are built different. Dude, hi. So, yeah, Sauce has been selling shit since day one. I don't even know what he's selling, but he's, he's like hustling. selling sodas, you he's know, doing at school good, or dude. doing whatever. He's Everybody doing good, go yeah. ask Sauce for money, you know? I wouldn't say that. <laughs> hey, Sauce, can I borrow a I, I get some money off him every now and then. Yeah. Lately, I've been working on some cars he has. Nice. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, Common but, Crew, OG. Yeah, when I moved to California and I met them, Sauce was like first guy. And him and Francis were like feuding Kind of, you know, like I, I kind of like met them both. But like after a little while, there was like some beef, like Sauce was working on a DVD and Francis was working on a DVD. Ooh. And there was like a couple guys over here with Francis. And then it was like me, Chaz and a couple other guys working with Sauce. Yeah. And uh, I don't know, it's 
That's interesting. I didn't yeah. know there was a feud at the beginning. I forget what Sauce's DVD was called, but yeah, there was like a little feud. There was some beef. Yeah. I, I wish I could remember filler better. Beef, dude, we love it. We love film and beef. <laughs> yeah, but anyways, they settled out. We all settled out, and then boom, we started Monster Mash, or they were working on it, and we all just kind of like really started pouring our hearts and souls into that. That's bomb. The whole common crew, Jacob, Ethan, everyone. Yeah. And every weekend went by, we're stacking our footage, and you know, it's getting posted online too, like Instagram clips, or right. I don't even know if we were doing Instagram back then. I guess, yeah, I was probably just starting out. Yeah. Uh, yeah, pouring our heart and souls into this DVD that we're going to finish, you know, within a couple months. Well, a couple months later, we go by, we look at it, we're like, ah, it's kind of, kind of boring, you know? <laughs> like, fuck, we <laughs> need to get good. some better clips. Yeah. So we started scrapping shit and putting shit on the internet, and then people started kind of, like, gaining notice of us. They're like, whoa, these comic guys are actually kind of good. And, yeah. like, every single time we posted a video, it was like, all of our scrap content or, right. you know, some daily weird shit. But, like, people were seeing us progress and yeah. seeing us progress. And that's when people really started taking notice. And I think Jacob got sponsored first. Jacob okay. Gable, yeah, he yeah. got sponsored by Osiris. No shit. And that's when we all realized, like, yo, we can do this. Yeah. Like, we can all get sponsored. We can all ride bikes. Hell yeah. And and make some money doing it and have fun and go on trips and do all the thing. Like, yeah. the dream was really starting to come together right at that point. When Jacob got put on Osiris, it was on. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> and Jacob only got put on Osiris because Devin Smiley moved down mm -hmm. to Huntington Beach from Georgia or wherever he was right before that. I think, yeah, he came from Georgia. Came to Huntington Beach and yeah. was immediately friends with us. Yeah. And was like, dude, we got a, a pro in our circle. Yeah. Like, what? Devin Smiley's affiliated with the comic crew. Dude. Yeah, exactly. Crazy. So he hooked Jacob up, and Jacob put out the Osiris at it, and then all of a sudden he got hit up by Kink, and we're like, dude, like, he's 14 years old yeah, at this go, point, Jacob, you know? Go, damn, yeah. He's 14 years old. He's got his nose manual. He's got his manual. He's got all the cool tricks, yep. and everybody loves him. We're like, all right, more footage. <laughs> Just yeah. kept filming, kept putting stuff out, and then, you know, sponsors just started coming in. Like, This is like, when you're putting out the scraps and shit, this is like, the come up is still popping. Oh, know? the come up is popping. Yes, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Sauce was that. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. Because Sauce was actually like one of the guys that posted on the yeah. come up. So I that him actually that. Yeah. that probably helped us a lot. 100%. Now that I think about yeah. it. Yeah, he's sitting there posting, writing good things he's, about he's WordPress, and just <laughs> yeah, typing shit sure. out, po hosting it on Vimeo or YouTube or whatever. Yeah, I remember it was like it was yesterday, dude. It's fucking red. Uh, so Jacob was the favorite of like. I guess sponsors and shit. Who was your favorite out in the crew in the early days? <laughs> Sauce. <laughs> Sauce didn't even yes. ride, but he was he's always been my favorite, you know? <laughs> like that guy. He there's nobody else that can pressure me to do something that Dude. I don't really want to do. He's like Sauce. He's great. Yeah. Sauce can get into my head so hard, <laughs> dude. He knows me so well because we've spent so much time together. Yeah. That's fun. And even back then, like he knew me good. Yeah. And could just get me. He just knew how to talk me into shit. What, so what, and I don't know if that's just a quality that he has. Like, you know how he's, he's kind a of a salesman. So that's what yeah. it is. He's right? great. He could sell ice to an Eskimo. And yep. He's selling these tricks to me. I was like, yeah, yeah you know what? I think I can do that. <laughs> You're right. Sauce. And I'm the type of guy myself. that likes a little bit of abuse. You know, I like to try to do a gap crank arm, even though I can't even crank arm. I'm just <laughs> like, we'll just see what happens. Like, what's tug and roll? <laughs> Fine. <laughs> I had no thought of getting hurt in my head at all. Good. For a lot of years. <laughs> now I've got the broken neck and all this other shit. I'm like, yeah. okay, maybe I can get yeah, hurt. 28, pushing 30, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, man, Dude, but nah. back then I was just like Max Vu, bouncing yeah. off the ground, no yeah. problem. Just let's go. Yeah, Fuck exactly. It. What popped into your head when you say sauce is not the best at pressuring you to do shit? Is there anything specific that you can remember in Monster Mash or elsewhere? This... I mean, literally watch the video every fucking trick. <laughs> I mean, oh yeah, I'm not even joking. Like, I would call stuff out that I knew I could do, but I would also just kind of like sit back and not say anything sometimes. And then Sauce would be like, hey, you should do blah, blah, blah. And then I'd walk up, look at it, and be like, oh, all right, fine. Like, you, you know, when you walk yeah. up to a spot and the spot tells you yeah. what to do? Yep. That's how I ride. That's how yeah. I always have ride. And if the spot doesn't tell me, sauce will. <laughs> <laughs> Bump. Yeah. Okay. And uh, but a specific see. trick, I don't know. If we're thinking about it, I'm thinking about the gap to pegs at Dwyer, like my Monster Mash banger. Yeah. 
the best thing I've ever done. Yeah. One of the best things I've ever done. Like, I'll... Pfft, Pretty who knows incredible. if I'll do a gap pegs like that again. Yeah. Dude, that shit was so scary. It was like a gnarly threader at the top. And, yeah, he talked me into it the first time. Like, after I jumped in the staircase a couple times, he kind of talked me into the gap pegs. Keep I talking. wanted to do it, but... Keep talking. Tell me the story. I'm going to pull it up. Yeah, but he was uh, pressuring me on that one when we pulled up the second time. Like, I tried it once, and I did not make it. I just kept, like, bitching out on the gap pegs, bitching out on the gap pegs. And then one time I, like, really thought I was going to go for it, but I didn't. I, like, really went for it, and then last second turned away and clipped an upright, like, near the bottom of the set and just slammed into the ground super hard. So I didn't come back for it for years. And then when I finally did come back for it, they had, like, repaved the run-up at the top. They added, like, a four-foot section of concrete that made it so I didn't have to cut through some grass to get to this gap pegs. And How I saw that shit. Period? How, six, five? No, nah, it's probably, like, years? three, Still probably, like, two, wild. probably, like, two years apart, honestly. Okay. So two years after I tried to, tried it, failed, I go back. Concrete's perfect. All the boys are hanging out at the ledge up at the top to the right. Yeah. And I rode down there just to look at it, you know. I just wanted to see what's that, you know, a little nostalgia, game, right? And then all of a sudden, I find this new patch of concrete, and I'm like, mm, no way! <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting there like tripping, because I know in my mind, like, if I tell them that it's perfect now, that I'm gonna have to do it. Yep. <laughs> and I went, ran my mouth, told them it was perfect, yep, and they dude, all made me do it. <laughs> so I strapped on the helmet and I freaking sent it. But I mean, it really. It's phenomenal that they put that piece of concrete there for me. Dude, oh my gosh. <laughs> that's, that's not even the first one I did. What do you mean? I mean, the first one I did, <laughs> the first one I did, I landed, but I didn't hit the kink. And I was like, oh, I got to do it again. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> but I jumped way, I went way faster the second time. and <laughs> landed so deep in that room. Damn. Dude, the first time I caught it perfect at, the, at yeah. that angle. And wow, yeah, dude, you, look at me. I could have... Yeah. Oh, I'm still icing, dude. <laughs> How many uprights did I skip? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Two. I hit the third. On the bottom. Yeah. Jesus, Lord, have Murphy. Massive. Yeah, so I don't, I don't know about none of that, dude. And that is, like you said, I never really, like, put it together how tight of a threader it is at the top. Well, you know who wild. the first person to jump into that stair set is? No. Trey Jones. Ah. Long ago, I, I can think. see that. Yeah, I don't know That's what right video I think. Yeah, maybe talk is cheap, maybe not. Yeah, I think it probably was talk is cheap. That's pretty He wild, jumped into man. that. Just gap firecracker and me being a dumb kid. I decided, oh, I should do the T-boggin. And, then, you know, Sauce is yeah. like, oh, yeah, definitely do the T-boggin. <laughs> so I did that, yeah. posted it on the internet. Trade's all mad. Colt's all <laughs> mad. And I'm like, uh, sorry, dude. I'm just paying homage. I'm so sorry, guys. Since then, we've worked it all out. Yeah. Everything's cool. No beef? You got beef with anybody? Uh, No. Me neither. No beef. I'm vegetarian. We love everybody around here, you know? Are you vegetarian for real? No, just no beef. Vegetarian, get it? Joke? Yeah. I eat meat like a motherfucker, man. Me Especially too. lately. I've been whipping up a pound of ground beef a day and having a little bit with some eggs in the morning, having some at night. You gotta get your protein in, dog. Yeah, for sure. Anyways, back to your biking. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the scariest shit sauce ever pushed you to do. He's your favorite. No, it's the not the scariest shit, but it was, oh, it's, it's this is a real scary head. one for sure. Yeah. That's one that pops in my head. And then, yeah, after all that, we just kept rolling. Yeah. Kept rolling. We had, we finally finished the DVD, right? Yep. And we had this big old premiere, and we made a deal with the promoters. We were like, yo, so what's the deal? Like, if we get a certain amount of people, can we get a break on the venue? Because the venue was like 1500 bucks. That's steep. I think we, we did it at the Yoast in Santa Ana. Cool. And venue was like 1500 bucks. We made a deal with the guy. We were like, yo, if we get 600 people here, can we, like, get it for, like, 1200 And he was like, yeah, that's that's a good deal. Let's do that. that is we got deal. like 550 people there, dude. Nice, dude. Like there was so much hype that's behind huge. Comic Crew and behind yeah. that video from all the teasers and all that shit that Francis did, dude. Yeah. Francis put in so much work on hell yeah, just hyping that up yeah. and like. Shout out Francis. Shout out Sauce for everything they've ever done for me or any of the Comic Crew or anybody. Like, yeah, those guys have real heart. Yeah, I remember getting an email from Francis. Uh, Sitting in Ryan Scher's house and reading the email from Francis hyping Julian up, trying to get him on Sabrosa. And mm -hmm. I was like, 
I gotta respect the shit out of this, dude. Like it's just like a real professional email breaking down like here's why Julian is amazing and does this that. Dude, blah, blah, yeah, like, none of dude, none of it would happen without Francis or Sauce making shit happen. Yeah, exactly. That's dope. I love it. So we had all those people to from here, and then after that, it was like, all right, all, all right, right. Dude, we're rolling. On the topic on cloud nine, dude. So what <laughs> happens after the premiere? After the premiere, we just kept doing it. Kept doing it, and then what? Yeah, we didn't do another DVD, but we started working on web videos, and yep. you know, started working on sponsor videos. I had got picked up by Stranger, yeah, kind of like midway that. through yeah. Monster Mash, like to get on Stranger. Francis, yeah, sent them all my footage that I had for Monster Mash so far, and they loved it. They were like, "Oh, this is cool! Like, Hell come yeah. out, and ride with us." And I went, rode out with them. Uh, Who was rode on with Miles? Know? Miles, yeah, yeah, it was, it was like Miles era. It was the dope. Yeah. Yeah. Miles, Gabe. Sick. Sean or Kenny. Yep. Uh, Eric L. That was, yeah, I remember Dude, that. Dude, that, that was a good era. Good crew, yeah. right? So, I mean, I'm over the moon at this point. I'm 18, 19 years old on Stranger. Yeah, fuck yeah. Got my big old block logo hat, wearing it every day, everywhere, yeah. comic crew shirts. Hell yeah. But it was weird because, uh, like, Miles, Gabe, these kind of dudes didn't really like comic crew because Ethan and Julian constant shit talkers on the internet right <laughs> putting out a bad name for comic crew so there was like one point where i went over to miles's house he was like yo you got to change out of that comic crew shirt before we go ride the street tomorrow and he gave me some fucking mongoose shirt <laughs> <laughs> and we went and rode gave me some fucking mongoose shirt yeah it was pretty, oh shit pretty funny now yeah. that i think about it but i don't picture ethan and julian being shit talkers on the oh, internet but blown. i guess young do you not dumb. remember that picture or that clip of ethan and julian kissing no. Oh, yeah, there's a clip on the internet, and Gabe was all upset. <laughs> he was like, <laughs> you know, firing at them. Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, <laughs> rest in peace, Gabe, man. Damn. Love did that you, motherfucker. Did you know that I wrote for Stranger 2? Did you really? Yeah. <laughs> we out here. I'm trying Hell to just yeah. figure out if I was, I think I was before you. It, must was, it was when Charlie Kremlish and Craig Becerra were on the team, and it must have been early, and then you guys came later. Whatever. Yeah, I don't know when yeah. they were on. But Stranger Gang, you know? <laughs> Whatever. Rich Hirsch gang. Yeah, Rich Hirsch. <laughs> uh, shout out Rich Hirsch. I like Rich. Um, all right. <laughs> Ethan and Julian kissed on the internet. That's fun. Mm -hmm. Just being babies. Uh, yeah, pretty much. Ethan still had hair. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, yeah, wild times. It was a while. It was a while ago. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, what happens? I mean, so you get on Stranger, and then? No hype, dude. We were working on no oh, hype. Yeah, so yeah. literally, like, for the first... Of my BMX career, or pretty much all of my street riding BMX career is caught on camera. Like, with Sauce, Miles, Francis. Nice. And actually Scott, too. Scott Marceau, I was yeah. working on, you know, a video part for a video that I never even thought would come out, but it finally did. <laughs> Angles, right? <laughs> Dude, he was working on that fucker for years. Yeah. But yeah, like the fir the whole beginning of my BMX career is literally on tape. You That's could see me progress. How it be, dude. That's bomb. Every yeah. trick I was learning, I was learning on camera because, <laughs> oh, yeah. dude, obviously I'm not gonna fall off camera. Yeah, for real. That's how I feel too. And I, you know, I'm a big sender, so when I see around, I'm like, yep. Hey, point the camera. I think I want to try this. Hell you know, yeah. Might make it down, might not. <laughs> Get the clip either way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I kind of made a career off falling. Yeah, good for you. It works. <laughs> Works. People love to see it. Yeah. A crash clip is a clip, especially if it's... That's what I'm saying. Crash, Dude, yeah. anytime we're out filming, I crash, boom, that's a clip. <laughs> and then I go back and get it. Get back up. You're like, I you have it. to get yeah, the clip, though. You do have this to get true. the clip if you want the crash clip to play. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, depending on how severe it is. Uh, yeah, I guess... But yeah, from there, uh, yeah, we started filming for No Hype, and No Hype was sick. Yeah. No I mean, you, you got the coolest guys in the industry, right? And I'm going mm -hmm. out with Miles all the time. Yeah. That's weird at all. What's your favorite memory with Miles? Um, probably this one time I went to Tulsa. It was actually Great on the place. road to Grime. I like Tulsa. Yeah, yeah, dude. I was born in Tulsa. Nice. I didn't know I liked Tulsa. I actually got a tattoo that says fuck Tulsa before I even went to Tulsa. <laughs> Look. I got the state of Oklahoma and then oh, right shit, on the capital right? it says fuck. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, no, that's actually one of my favorite memories with Miles is just going on the on the road to grime yeah me sauce travis pulled up to miles's uh little workshop that he had and it was cool it had you know like one of those infinity walls where you can take all the photos right. and everything yeah. looks all cool but it's called a cyclorama but it's 
perfect quarter pipes oh, everywhere, yeah. right? And he yeah. had this one window sill, so you could get up in there and do a two stall or whatever. Nice. And this motherfucker had this idea in his head that he wanted to film an all black and white video on this white quarter pipe wall or okay. infinity wall or whatever you just called it. Yeah. So we're all just dressed in all white or all black. Yeah. sessioning this ramp until 7 in the morning. And then the next day, he's got to do this big shoot on the ramp. Yeah. And there's black tire marks all over the thing. Yeah. So at 7 in the morning, I'm patching holes and painting the thing up <laughs> right after this heavy session. Damn. Yeah, that's probably one of my best memories. Yeah, that's a, that's a good morning. Hell day. Yeah. That's fire. And then when did Stranger end for you? Uh, right after Adam LZ got on, you know, when everybody, when yeah. the, whole, the whole conspiracy yeah, dude, hit and everyone this. dropped. Tell, tell me like I don't know. Um, well, so what had happened so was, YouTuber. what had happened was we were on Stranger, best team ever at the time. Then I guess Rich Hirsch had the right idea to put Adam LZ on, which was like popping YouTuber at the point or at that point in time. Yeah. That's when, I, I don't know, if he was vlogging or doing he whatever. Was yeah, he was vlogging, right? Yeah. So that shit was kind of just starting to pop off, and Rich Hirsch caught wind of it and was like, oh, I'm going to put him on Stranger. We need another guy. Yeah. And it pissed off Augie Simonici so bad. I call him <laughs> Uncle Augie. Uncle Augie got so goddamn mad that he just blew up on Rich Hirsch and went all over the internet saying, you know, fuck this company, fuck this, fuck that. I can't <laughs> believe they would do this. Because they put Adam LZ straight to pro and started paying him, you know, several hundred more dollars than they were paying anybody else on Stranger. And he didn't ask, Rich did not ask nobody yeah. if he should put this guy on or what we thought of this guy or anything. So it immediately felt like, Oh, okay. Our our Fuck team manager, then, huh? yeah, yeah, our team manager literally does not care about us. He just, you know, yeah, he's doing whatever he's doing. So I guess Augie left, and then after that, um, who left next? I don't remember. The dude, it was like a chain. Yeah. It was like three people <laughs> left, <laughs> and then I was like, all right, Rich, what's the deal? What are we doing here? Yeah. What's the plan for next year? And there was no plan. He didn't care, and I was like, all right, I'm out too. Yeah. I'm glad I did because where where would I be now if I didn't, right, you know? Yeah. Um, from there, I sat on my ass. I was working at a door factory building custom wood doors and custom wood windows. Like great, ornate, huge sliding doors, all this shit. <laughs> he loves the doors, dude. Like, your face lit up. You're like, great, Oh, I ornate. love it. Dude, they're so good. <laughs> oh, man. These are beautiful ass that doors, is, Honestly, that's kind of where Shitcock's build started. I started digging in the trash at the wood factory. Sick. Okay. It's good there trash go. in there, dude. I was seeing all these <laughs> cut off wood pieces. Like, damn, that's, damn. that's a curve ledge right there. Like, <laughs> all I got to do is put some steel on the side. <laughs> that's fire. But yeah, I was working there and fucking... From there, fuck, man. What was I talking about? <laughs> <laughs> so you left Stranger, and then you're sitting on your ass for a bit. You're chilling. You're just marinating. Yeah, sitting on no my ass for a little bit, and Ryan Sure hits me up. He's like, yo, you want to ride for Suppressa? Or somebody hit me up and yeah. told me Ryan Sure wanted me on Suppressa. I'm like, oh, I kind of got this deal in the works, because Reed had told me that he was going to try to get me on BSD. I just met him in Barcelona. Mm -hmm. And... Whatever, for whatever reason, we hit it off, you know? Yeah. I guess I fixed somebody. He tells a story like, everyone was trying to fix this bike for hours and hours and hours, and nobody could do it. And then finally, I was like, ah, oh, let me see what's up. And I fixed it. Boom, 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 boom. And ever since then, Reed's loved me. He's like, dude, you're the fucking man. <laughs> like, <laughs> what, I don't even know whose bike energy. it was. But um, yeah, ever since then, he was like, all right, I'm, I'm going to get you on BSD. Okay. And... He, he told me that was in the works. Grant Smith was, you know, I, I talked to him once, but, like, I hadn't really got to talk to him yet. He seems awesome. I've never talked to him either. Grant's the man, dude. Yeah. He will party harder than any of yeah. us. Yeah, that's what Dish you know, Matt was then, telling me. Then put a check in your pocket. like Grant Smith. Okay, let's go. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, while I'm sitting there at the wood factory, you know, kind of sitting on my ass, Sure's hitting me up, too, so I'm like this. I'm like, damn. What do I do? That's like, I, I need a new bike right now. Like, I'm on this stranger. I, I need to get something. Do you remember something. what year this is? That's probably 2018. Okay. You know, yeah. somewhere right then and there. And, like, I called Rich. I, fin or I finally got a hold of uh, Ryan one day. 
He finally. called me. Yeah, yeah. Fine, finally got to talk to him. <laughs> Notorious bed. And he was right like, there. yo, what's up? Like, you want to ride? I was like, yeah, I mean, fuck, it sounds good. Yeah. It all sounds real good. And the next day, Grant hit me up. And he was like, hey, uh, oh, I heard you got on Sabrosa. Damn, one day. <laughs> he was like, I heard you got on Sabrosa. Uh, best of luck, this and that. I was like, well, actually... You know, nothing's official he's, yet. He's like I'm still though. I'm still <laughs> trying to get on BSD. <laughs> like nothing's <laughs> official yet. So then he was like, Oh, okay, cool. And I had to call Ryan and be like, dude, I'm so sorry, <laughs> but like I'm going BSD. You gave Sabrosa blue balls. I'm hey, sure he was cool with it. He's yeah, like, he was yeah, he was all right with it. I mean yeah. he didn't send me a bike or nothing, so it was all cool. Yeah. But yeah, BSD hooked me up and then pff, history the from there, sense, dude. Yeah. It's fucking awesome. I don't yeah, I don't picture BSD without you, man. It's crazy. I love it, man. Yeah. BSD is the best sponsor ever. Thank you, Grant Smith, for everything you've ever done. Hell shout yeah. out Reed. And honestly, the new guys, phew, shout out the new guys. Yeah, you talking Trent, Grant Yubi? Oh, yeah. Bro, my inspirations. They're fucking amazing. <laughs> I love dude. those yeah. boys. I'm They're literally going to move to Texas you know? because of them. Hell yeah. For sure. In yeah. the next couple months, that's kind of the, the next move I have going. They're good boys. I'm loving the enjoy the in betweens, dude. And Trent busts his ass, and Yubi's just a smile. As a human, it's fucking amazing. Yeah, Yubi's yeah. great to be around, and yeah. Trent, like, will do anything for you and just has such a great vision. Yeah. You know, like, he's always got a vision for what he wants to do. He's not ever just sitting on his ass, like, right. oh, what he's, am I going to do? He's, he's making shit happen. He's always on the move. So that's what Glasgow I love about right him. Now? Yeah, he's still in Glasgow yeah. for another, like, 45 days yeah. or something like that. <laughs> he booked wild. a 75 day trip. He's out. That's awesome. Yeah. Dude. Good for Trent. Hell yeah. Uh, why aren't you out there? Uh, is it a BSD thing that's out there? Or is it it's a dig the, thing that is Dude, out there? I should have went. It was the dig. It was yeah, the, the dig thing, year. the yeah. 30 year, right? But it was also a crazy BSD jam. But I had just got back from Scotland. And I was there. I broke my neck. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I just got over that. And I don't know. I just didn't really have this trip planned in my head. I didn't know it was going to be so goddamn good. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I didn't know the jam was going to be so crazy. Jeez. I just kind of under <laughs> underlooked it, yeah. right? And I'm Fuck definitely it. jealous. And I'm not there now. I told Trent that the other day. Yeah. I mean, he's going to be there so long, I might still be able to catch him if I want to, <laughs> but Glasgow ain't going anywhere. He I can moved go there. there any year. Pretty much. Uh, I would love to go to Glasgow at some point. That'd be fun. You never been? Never been. Oh, that's good. The only place in Europe I've been is Barcelona, and I love that. I don't know. Europe is tight. It's different. You know, it's like old buildings. Everything's made out of like real materials. Mm -hmm. I mean, you come back to America and it's always built like, you know, cookie cutter and like cost cutting materials and stuff. But over there, it's like old shit. You know, built vintage, well. vintage buildings. Yeah. I'm sure you can appreciate some some nice doors. Oh, <laughs> nice door there. meet you, bro. <laughs> nice door meet you. <laughs> <laughs> That's Miles right there, dude. Yeah. Nice door meet. Man, that shit caught on like wildfire. And then Maloof's in Arizona. And I, I don't think I've ever spent that much time with Miles, but like his lingo has entered my life a whole bunch. Through, the through Tony? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. How long <laughs> nice did Tony live here? You. Dude, he was out here for a minute. I don't know. I want to say like six or seven years. He lived out here in Peoria in a house that is like, you went to that house, at some, I'm sure, at some point. I actually right? never made it to that house. The no way. house, dude. It was legendary. It was real. And I lived, my parents' house was like 10 minutes away from it. And I was still super young. And Jet Westcott and Malou for the reason that I got into filming. Like I showed up to that house and they're both like sitting at the kitchen table, logging the clips from the day. And I was just like, that's what I want to do. And then changed my entire life. But so many parties and pool and you can jump in the pool and it was like an, an adult house like a grown-up really nice house but just filled with bmx scum it was fire yeah you know, nice. Like, you know how it goes yeah hell yeah, yeah. that house is bomb and the lingo <coughs> catches on yeah lingo never stops nice bro. to meet you what's Tony's the latest still on it yeah he's always i don't know dude shit. i haven't seen miles in a long time yeah miles has a kid now he's painting murals all over the place yeah he's doing good though huh oh yeah better yeah. than he's ever been as far as i hear as nice. far as, as far as i see you know yeah I, I think maloof and him are together right now or i saw him oh really story. like i saw miles on maloof's story but oh nice whatever. it's possible uh how'd you break your neck i broke my neck in scotland in cool. glasgow i tried to do a four flat four flat four gap ice pick I was trying to just ice pick the last little yeah. nug, dude. And I'm talking, it's a nug, dude. It was like two and a half foot long grind. <laughs> I was <laughs> going for it. and uh, Top speed. Yeah, exactly. More speed, less doubt. Crank into it. Yeah. Um, you just have your dad in your head just going, Wah, Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> you know, yes, I'm standing up there like, I'm going are. this time. And yeah. I, remember, I remember saying, uh, I think Frank Blurry asked me, he was like, um, ice pick or are you gapping the stairs? I was like, I think I'm just going for it. 
I'm going for it. <laughs> I'm going for it on this one, boy. <laughs> and I turned around and I cranked at that thing full 100%. No Ice doubt in my head, I was going to do it. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing it. <laughs> exactly. I think I'm going for it. Okay. Well, it was right. Dude, I was all hyped up because yeah. uh, Foley just did like the craziest thing in Glasgow. Like, this is a rail hop that everyone who's been to Glasgow has looked at and nobody has ever handled it. And all okay. of a sudden, Foley's all hyped up. And he does it right in front of my eyes. Craziest thing ever. So, like, right across the street is this Gap Ice Pick that I looked at a year before. And I'm mm-hmm. like, oh, I'm trying to let's trying to go it. to that. Like, originally when Foley landed that, I said, okay, let's go to the bar. <laughs> yeah. Should have stuck with that plan <laughs> yeah. because what had happened after that was not yeah, good. You know, yeah, like, no good. we pedaled across the street. And there's, like, 15 of us. Like, yeah. top-notch BMX riders photographers, you name it, dude. We had everyone there. Vibes are high. And I say, I'm going to go for it. I crank at this thing as fast as I can. I go to do the gap ice. I do everything perfect. It is flawless until I get right to that ice pick and I hit the side of the rail like two inches down from the top. Damn. And it's, you know, it's like a blocky rail. It's like a six inch thick, two inch wide rail. Yeah. So I ice the side wall of this rail and it slips me into the upright. And I went to stab it, right? So you know how when you stab an ice pick, you kind of like start said, moving your yeah. legs like that? Yeah. I went to stab it, but instead of stabbing it and having my legs like that, you know, so I could be ready for the impact when I hit the ground, I hit the ground like this, like full straight legs and just folded, dude. Smashed Oof. my face so bad on the concrete. <laughs> Look, God, I still dude. got a scar. You see this, all this new shit? Yeah. Dude, that's a new scar from that broken neck. Oof. I dragged my face on the ground for, you know, half a second. <laughs> Flipped over, high speed scorpion, and just flat backed, laying there, starfish. Like, whoa, yeah, whoa. And I, I kind of like got up and I'm doing this, and I, I don't even feel any pain in my neck at this point. I think I'm totally fine. Everything's cool. Like, the only reason we it's went to the doctor good. is because I sat there for ten minutes saying, like, yo, did I try it? Yo, so I tried it. <laughs> like, I'm sitting there laying at the bottom, like, You're whoa, la la land. No, I. I did it, right? Like, <laughs> and they're like, no, you did not do it. But I tried it, and they're like, you tried it. You did not do it, dude. God but yeah, no, I asked them. Who knows how many times I asked them, yeah. you know? You knocked yourself out. Yeah, I was 10 minutes yeah. just laying there. Concussed. Silly. Yeah, yeah so concussed. But I was up sure. I was up right away. Like, yeah. I didn't lay on the ground for any period of time unconscious. Right. There was nobody slapping my face like, denim, denim, denim. Yeah. It was like... Straight up, yeah. Start looking around. Just, just control all the your brain real quick. Just yeah, exactly. <laughs> what happened? How did I get? It? That's why I keep asking. What was I talking about? Yeah. Dude, I'm telling you, <laughs> it's affected me <laughs> just a little bit, at least. Yeah, fuck it. Me too, dude. Uh, my concussions over the years have made me not remember shit and a bunch of other stuff that I've done to my brain. Anyway. How many you got? Uh, I don't know, three or four. The, the my favorite one that I can remember when you're saying this that you're asking the same question over and over. It's like one of my favorite feelings I've ever experienced, and I've done everything like this. Just being knocked out at the skate park and then, like, opening my eyes and seeing all my friends and just being like, "How did I get here? This is awesome. What are you guys doing here?" Like, I, I came to the <laughs> What's skate up, park. Dude? Like, Wait, so what happened? And they're like, "You tried a bag lash and then you ate shit." And I was like, "Cool." And then you know, thirty seconds goes by. I'm like, "How did I get here? This is awesome. <laughs> you guys are great." Like, yeah, you know, it's such like, a trip. Just, That's only happened to me one other like, time. One other time, I hit that back of my head really hard. And yeah, I was same thing. It's Ten weird. minutes, like yo, what? We're fragile as fuck, dude. You know, it's crazy. And Something. another time, I smashed my face on the ground. I tried to do the smith, uh, over smith. Didn't know how to over smith, right? <laughs> of course. Like maybe I could do it on a flat rail, but I had never tried it on a down rail. So I thought this five stair rail was gonna be perfect for it. Yeah, it's the same rail from Pretty Sweet. I don't know if you've seen that one uh-huh. where he does the tray flip no grind. Uh uh-uh. It's all switch at the end. Mm-mm. Well, anyways, it's like a five stair. It's like a four inch wide. You know, five foot long rail. Nice. I try to do the oversmith. I miss front peg. My front peg lands, you know, this far (laughs) over the end of the rail because it's a five stair. And I just, boom, face to ground. Drag my face. Abdullah gives me a ride to the hospital. I tell him pull over so I can puke on the way there. I get to the hospital and my dad finally comes and meets us. And we're just sitting there in the waiting room. When I told him I was good, he took me out of the hospital. <laughs> I wish we would have stayed there for a little longer. But yeah, no, <laughs> we left. Him, we left before we even made it. Yeah. yeah you're like, Dad, I'm good. He's like, all right, son. Yeah, exactly. The second I said I was good, grand for I'm this out. Shit. Get out of here. I mean, I had insurance, I'm sure. Yeah. but. And then you're in, luckily you're in Europe, so it's covered. Yeah? 
No, I, well, yeah, when I broke my for neck, one, yeah. when I broke my neck, yeah, I was in Scotland. It's free healthcare, so it should be boom. Should be free. Yeah. You know, everything's cool. The lady told me in the thing the next day, like when she came to get insurance information or whatever, I was like, "Yo, isn't this free?" She was like, "Well, you're from the states, so I mean, technically no. Um, I just need your address. I need this." And I was like, "Listen, I am fucked. Like, if, if you make me pay this, I am, I'm done. Like, yeah. I literally cried to her. You know, like." Yeah. Not that I really am struggling that bad, but yeah. I was all emotional from just hitting my head. Yeah. And for whatever reason, I cried to this lady and yeah. laid it all out to her. And she was like, all right, Scott's word to American. I'm going to do what I can to make this go away. And oh, I was what like, oh, you are the best. Like, thank you so much. I hope I never see you again. And <laughs> yeah. she's like, uh, yeah, all right. Damn, that's see awesome. Ya. But then she sent me a bill for 1,800 bucks. Oh, so, well, 1,800 pounds. So what is that, like 2,500 US? Yeah, that's money. I exactly. Mean, I'm gonna call him back and say, "Hey, I'll know." What did they end up doing to fix your shit? Anything? They put the wrong neck brace on, and that was it. Like, <laughs> what the fuck? No, nah, they they gave me X-ray, saw that my neck was broke, came in with the neck brace and put it on me without even telling me that my neck was broke. They just like walked in randomly with the neck brace. I'm sitting there with Reed. We're just having a good yeah, old time, go. laughing. What's this for? Cool. And then they fucking brought that thing in. I'm like, "Yo, uh, what's this for?" <laughs> They're like, "Oh, you broke your your C5," and I was like. What's a my C5? neck? Yeah. yeah, my neck? He's just like, yeah. Huh. Like, oh, wow. And then at that point, you know, I got really scared. I was yeah, like, yo, dude. no way. Like, this is a serious injury. And Reed's yeah. right there. He's like, dude, I don't know what to tell you. Like, <laughs> maybe, maybe this is a sign. Like, you got to stick start taking care of yourself you know like your body's a temple bro you he gotta take care of your raw superfoods <laughs> yes he's like yeah exactly dude like next day he was pouring me up raw i'm laying yep. in tam's house looking at the ceiling <laughs> reed's pouring me up some raw <laughs> that's my guy dude but yeah i'm sitting there and they bring the neck race in put it on and tell me it's all broken and then I'm like okay whatever and they told me they're like yo we need to keep you overnight uh we want to get you an mri just to make sure I don't even know what they were going to check, but they told me they were going to give me an MRI and they needed to keep me overnight so they could do it the next morning. And I was like, all right, well, whatever. I broke my neck. So I should probably do that. Like, yeah. just do everything right, you know? But, you know, 7 a.m. rolls around and I'm like, all right, where's my MRI? Yeah. Good morning. Nobody's coming to help me. I, dude, I didn't even sleep. Like, yeah. That neck brace was the worst thing anybody has ever put on me and trying to sleep with it. I bet. It was horrible. So I would take it off and just lay there and stare at the ceiling. Rough. And then the doctor would come in or like a nurse or somebody would come in and be like, yo, you like, you need to wear that. <laughs> Put it back on all frustrated and wear it for a minute. And then fine mom. <laughs> yeah, basically. And then, yeah, like I said, 7am rolls around and I'm like, okay, you know, it's going to take a couple more hours. Get my neck brace. They told me they were going to give me a new neck brace because this neck brace sucks so bad. And they still hadn't done that. Still hadn't given me an MRI. And then like nine o'clock rolls around and they come in and they're like, hey, um, actually we're not gonna give you an MRI. Like, you don't need it. I looked at your stuff. Your, total, your neck is totally stable. Should be good. Couple weeks in the neck brace. We'll, we'll get you that brace. They said they're gonna get you. I was like, okay, cool. I stay there. It's like 3 p.m. at this point. I'm Damn. still like, yeah. yo, oh, dude, I've been standing in the hallway, backpack on, arms crossed, like, just tapping oh, my rumps. foot, tapping my foot. <laughs> I'm talking to every nurse in there like, yo, just get me my papers. Like, just get me my discharge yeah. papers. All I want to do is leave. Get me the neck brace that's right and let me go. Yeah. I got my backpack on. The neck brace is just like hanging from the strap of my backpack. That's how mad I am. That's, I wanted to go so bad, but I also really wanted the right neck brace yeah. at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like just standing there in the hallway like this just <laughs> trying to get somebody to come attend to me but it's all free health care so that's it's they're just it. working through all the yeah. priorities through the whole hospital yeah. and i'm low priority i'm standing there in the hallway fine like yeah, obviously exactly. they're not going to come check on me now right. that i think about it if i was in there screaming and agonizing pain maybe they would yeah, help me somebody will be there dude i screaming and agonizing pain just reminded me of what was going on in the hallway what was going there on there was in the this hallway? lady that didn't have a room but she needed to be in the hospital and she was like kind of like parked right by the nurses in the hallway and all night long she's saying oh help me oh dear jesus help me oh help me all night long so yeah i did not sleep through that and dude she was still doing it when i left at like 7 p.m or 6 p.m 
<laughs> dude, I left at 6 p.m. and she was still saying, oh, dear, oh, dear Jesus, please help me. <laughs> and I don't know what was going on with her, but I pray for her. I hope she's okay. I hope I hope so, too. <laughs> but that is funny. Yeah. Oh, dear. Oh, help me. Oh, what a, Lord, one dear. hell of an experience. I saw the clip of you. The only thing I saw of it was like you were, uh, what's it called? You were barbecuing or some shit with your neck brace on. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I had a good time with that neck brace on, honestly. I just kept going to bars and shit. I didn't didn't really chill. I would chill during the day, like when they go out and ride and stuff. I was just laying in Tam Roston's apartment, you know, kind of like staring at the ceiling. There was a couple days where I got out and tried to go ride street, but dude, it was making me stiff in the neck region. Yeah, Yeah. and I would get home and just be so miserable and have to stare at the ceiling. What does it feel like to have a broken C5? Where's the C5? It's here. It's like, uh, you know, lower neck, upper back. Yeah. It's like right near your spinal cord. Danger. So I mean it, yeah, no, it could have been a could paralysis, been honestly. Yeah, yeah. But it didn't hurt for the most part. It's just really stiff from not using my neck like normal, right. you know? I'm locked in. So like yeah. every movement is like this. Full shoulders. <laughs> I'm looking That's at people, dude. I thought it was the funniest okay, no, thing ever. Yeah. I'd be talking to people like, <laughs> what? What? <laughs> arms swinging like one yeah, of those exactly, things, dude. <laughs> but it wasn't that bad. I mean, I still got to go out ride street a couple days. Well, not ride, yeah. but watch people ride street. Just watch him fully kill it. Yeah. Just call out stuff for him. Watch him do it. Yeah. It's a good feeling. What and then, man. you know, I ended up at the bar a couple nights, too. Boom. I could do, a, you know, a couple hours on my feet a day. It was kind of like my max. I couldn't really pedal. If I would pedal, you know, I'd hit a speed bump or something every now and Oof. then. And just yeah. tense up my whole body. It, yeah, not comfortable. Yeah. But three weeks later, I went to a chiropractor in the States. And I said, hey, can you x-ray my neck? Like, I broke it three weeks ago. I just want to make sure that everything's healing right. You know, I got this neck brace on. I've been wearing it. I've been doing all the right things. Dude. Right. He was like, oh, cool. Yeah, that sounds good. X-rayed me. He's like, okay, I see the fracture. Looks stable. Looks good. Like, doesn't look too bad. Um, why are you wearing the neck brace? And I was like, what do you mean? They told me I had to wear this thing for six weeks. He was like, yeah, but... You heard the back of your neck, right? And I was like, yeah. He's like, uh, well, you see this neck brace, how it's working? He showed me the x-ray of my spine right here. He's like, see your gaps in the front? Like, there's gap in between every vertebrae, right? Right. He's like, you see your gaps in the front? Perfect. Uh, that thing is putting pressure on that back deal. Like, oh, I would no. not be wearing that neck brace if I was you. He's like, Damn. take it off and start using your neck or you're going to be stiff for the rest of your life. Damn. He's like, start Scotland. doing start doing exercises like this. <laughs> you know, a little, little this, a little that. And I was like, all right, bet. So I took that neck brace off and just chucked it in the trash right in front of his <laughs> yes. chiropractor. I was like, let's go yeah no neck brace no problem baby (laughs) i'm screaming my mom's all happy everyone's happy dancing in the parking lot and shit this is this year right yeah this was two months ago max that's wild man yeah less than two months ago (laughs) i'm happy i'm happy you're well what would what were you out in uh scotland for i feel like there was a reason but yeah i feel like there was a reason but i can't remember i think it was just because everyone was out there yeah just like well, Reed trip. Reed was going out there for some other thing. Some other thing. He's DJing yeah. somewhere. He's he's at Burning Man currently, right? Is Burning Reed, Man no? Going on okay, right okay, now? okay, okay. I got it all figured out. He's at Burning Man currently, or on his way there, or whatever. Yeah. Just catch me not Reed going started. to Burning Man. I'm not <laughs> going to Burning Man. I'm sorry. Have you ever been? No. I would. I'm curious. I've never been either. I would like to go ten years ago. It'd probably be great, but yeah. fuck it. I don't need it. <laughs> I don't, I don't need that. So what'd you figure out with Reed just now in your head? Mm. <laughs> mm. Short-term memory loss. Dude, this is so fun because usually I'm the one that's like, uh. <laughs> nah, dude, I'm a space case. Straight up. That's what's up. Oh, yeah, Reed. He, I figured out why he was in <laughs> Scotland. He was there filming something with... Uh, Something for the 30 year, the dig 30 year. Okay. He was yeah. filming like some documentary of Peter. him like going back and talking about all the spots that he hit for living for the city nice. and, you know, yeah. his old school stuff. He was talking so, about, you know, 10 years ago of him yeah. going to old spots that he had hit and kind of like looking at how the spots have overgrown with trees and yeah. poles and That's dope. how spots have been torn out and stuff. So he was there doing that with Frank and Peter Adams. Yep. And I was like, okay, well. 
Grant wanted to fly me out. I was like, yeah, I'm down. Like, yeah. Let's do it. Get some footage. I was going to film for the mixtape. I might have got a couple clips before I broke my neck, <laughs> but I think that was like day three on a two-week trip. I wonder, so you said, so you, <laughs> I was going to say, are they going to use the crash clip? Are you breaking your neck? They used it in that 30-year thing, I oh, think. Or they yeah. used, you know, some audio of it or something. Dude, yeah. it's a brutal crash. Oof. I was actually looking for it a minute ago. I was going to show you. It's not too far in. I can't even imagine. Ugh. It's just high speed. Like, it's literally as fast as you can go, man. And then I ended up flying home early from that trip. I stayed, like, five, six days after I broke my neck just to stay. I wanted to stay for the whole trip, but... Then I was like, kind of like looking on Instagram, and I saw that uh, Vish was throwing that jam at Epic, and yeah. I was like, "Ooh, that's my bike shop!" Like, all right, I'm gonna come home. <laughs> nice. So I, I rebooked a new flight and came home and went to that jam with came the neck home brace for the jam. on. Dope. Yeah, yeah, I had the neck brace on. I'm sitting there moving up ledges around for these little kids <laughs> and all the little uh, little ramps. Those ramps looked fun. I would I would like to ride those little. Yeah, shout ledges. out Vish for doing that. Yeah. I love that event. That was awesome. The BMX event. The BMX event. I didn't go to number two, but. I heard number one was better. We support it in spirit, even if we're not there. I was in town, I remember, and I, I was like, I looked at the map to see where Epic was, and I was like, damn, it's only 20 minutes away. But I you was were like, in Huntington? I was, uh, or you were I in North County? Venice. Oh, shit. All right, I'm getting really close. That's what she said. I got a screenshot of the scorpion. Oh, my God, dude. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I got that. Brutal. Airdrop it. Um, we'll, sh we'll show the people. Well, I'll airdrop the clip. All right. If I can find it. Oh, here it is. I'm airdropping it to you now. Well, let's go. Oh, it's so nice. Except. It's a it's footage of footage. So forgive me. Uh, I don't know who filmed it for me. Everybody will have to forgive you. Oh, it's still still cooking. It's still air dropping. Aw, oh, dude, it's only a nine second clip. Receiving. I'm receiving. Pause. <laughs> uh it failed. Try again. Okay. This is riveting podcasting, honestly. This is where you know you're doing it right. You just I mean, I'm having fun talking to you. I don't really care how everyone else feels. That's the spirit. Me too. All right. Oh, come on. Tell me fails. No, it, I don't think it failed. I could just say I got it, but uh just wouldn't open. Come here, boy. There it is. Okay. Hold uh -huh, on. Uh-huh. Hold on for uh -huh, the debut. Uh-huh. OBS. Everybody wanna see it. Anybody wanna see a Here dead body? <laughs> Here we go. Four flat, four flat floor. Well, that last four stair is pretty pathetic. Oh my god. Yeah, I just yeah. missed it, dude. Yeah, just missed it. We'll see it again in super slow motion. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see it again in super slow How many times have you seen this? Uh, 50. Frank is Frank. Right there, dude. Everything yeah. perfect, and then just didn't <sighs> do it perfect. Just ba like inches. I hit the side of the rail. Yeah. Like right when I got to it, I hit the side of the rail. And then you see I'm straight leg, not even ready yeah. for it. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Bike off the ground, oh. feet off the ground. <laughs> There's the scorpion I That's was talking about. Pretty solid scorpion. Mm -hmm. It's like a yoga position right there. Dude. Oh, my God. It even flips. That, yeah, yeah, that's the most flexible <laughs> I've ever been. <laughs> right there. <laughs> Check me out. Mm. Oh, man. Dental. And then, boom, flat back. Like, high. Just, all right. Look at me. I fixed my hair immediately. <laughs> <laughs> dude. Shit, dude. Well, glad you're okay. That's pretty buck. Yeah, I don't recommend breaking a neck. That's pretty buck. Aside from that, I mean, we, while we're on the topic of crashes, what else sticks out? What's, uh, dude, what's you know that one? super viral crash I have? It's me riding across, doing oh, yeah, a yeah, barrel yeah, yeah, ride yeah, yeah. over a river. <laughs> yeah, it's so good. Dude. <laughs> super I literally, viral. Dude. I, uh, one time I was out at my parents' house, and it, t my dad has, like, 18 or 19 of these 55 gallon blue drums, you know, yep. blue plastic drums filled with chemicals or whatever they were anyways. Now they're empty and they're just in our yard. So I always wanted to build like a little whoop section, you know, ride a dirt bike over wah, over some plastic, you know, it's kind of slippy and yeah. makes, makes for good action, right? So one day me and my homie Jackson Olson were at the house and I said, I think these float, right? Like this flare, like let's, 
Just set it up over the river and see what happens. We have a pond in our backyard. Called it the river. Set it up over the river. I come into this shit as fast as I should have been going, I thought. But as it turns out, it was twice as fast as I needed to go. <laughs> I'm chugging a beer on the way, and I throw that yep. beer out, and all of a sudden I'm barrel riding over this river. But when I get to the last barrel, it's kind of like pushed up onto the dirt bank at this point, so it's solid underneath. There ain't no water <laughs> to let it drop and do its thing. And I hit that thing, and it just threw me right over the handlebars. I am flat on my back, but I landed on my back so hard because I went over the bars, right? Full right. Superman as long as I possibly could. Yeah. Until it sent me over the bars, and I landed flat on my back so hard that it stood me up on my feet, <laughs> yeah, and I just ran just it ran out. It I was like, so holy good. shit. And then, uh, yeah, Ridiculousness ended up buying that clip. Nice. And Rob actually got to comment on my video, which was really cool. Oh, yeah. He was like, dude, this guy looks like some kind of soft body, <laughs> or, or Arkansas soft body Calvin Klein model. <laughs> Nice. Dude, it's Fuck hilarious. Yeah. He's like, I consider that a make. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah. I haven't seen that ridiculousness clip, but I've seen that clip a bunch. Barrel ride over a river. <laughs> <laughs> I can't hear Rob doing that. Da, 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 da. <laughs> he even made dirt bike noises and everything, dude. Hell yeah. Blue. How much did they buy it for? 200 bucks. Fuck yeah. Balling dog. I still got rights, Let's too, go. dude. It was like 300 bucks and you get no rights to your video. 200 bucks, you get some rights. You know, 100, some you get all the like, rights. Give me the 300. <laughs> nah, I was like, two, yeah, fine. Give me the rights. I don't Fuck care. Yeah. I didn't even That's know awesome. I was going to get paid for it. I just did it for you fun. You deserve that $200 for it almost. Free beer yourself. for the yeah. next event. No injuries, though? Uh, I went to the chiropractor the next day for sure. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just got realigned real quick. <laughs> you a big chiropractor guy? Uh, not a big chiropractor guy. Maybe a time of year. One time a year? That yeah. seems reasonable. I'm thinking about going pretty soon here. I hate how, like, I've gone a couple of times, and every time I get mad because they're like, come up, come next week. I'm like, fuck you. Like, you do the thing, you know? Yeah, do the thing. Help do me the out. Thing. I don't, shouldn't have to come back again. That's crazy. Yeah, I try to stay out. Yeah. They every time I get like, the idea to go to the chiropractor, all of a sudden I feel better the next day. <laughs> I wake <laughs> up, and I'm like, I don't need that. Dude, that's how it I goes. I don't need no chiropractor. I don't need no doctor. <laughs> I don't need no doctor. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, you don't need no doctor, man. I do, man. I need to go. I haven't do been. You? I haven't done the physical exam. You know, the little one year checkup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't done that in five years. I haven't done it in seven. <laughs> well, you it's time to go. Yeah, I think you want to go to the doctor after. Well, this? the only reason I want to go is because my dad pricked me the other day. He went like that with the little diabetes test strip, oh, right? Yeah, yeah. And my blood sugar is like one twenty after sleeping. I have all no night. frame of reference for that. It's high. What should normal blood sugar be? Eighty to one hundred. Oof. Eighty to one hundred. You got diabetes. No, not yet, but I could be pre-diabetic according to that goddamn right. test strip. Shit. I don't know if it was a false reading or what, but... Maybe it's time to start taking care of yourself. That's what I'm Have saying. Have you tried raw superfoods? No, I've tried not Canada? eating. <laughs> you tried fasting? <laughs> that works. That's what I did before the test, and it still tested high, so I don't know what the hell, man. Hmm. I'm about to go to the doctor and get this shit checked out. You can reverse it with proper diet and good intermittent fasting, you know what I'm saying? Well, I love saltines, right? Saltines are apparently bad for you. Yeah, that ain't gonna do it. What do you eat? What did you eat today? Uh, today I had one tostada with chicken. Okay. And actually I had a bagel with cream cheese too. Okay. I, dude, I don't even eat that much. Yeah. Honestly. Huh. But sometimes I do. What about Sometimes sodas? I love you sugar. Yeah, today I had a couple Cokes. Okay. Couple Cokes? Yeah, a couple Cokes. Like you got a monster. Yeah. A power like, a, like an OG monster? Like a green one? Yeah, not a BFC, but a normal monster. Yeah. Standard size. That's so much. I had sugar. half of that. I had two Cokes. I had a full Powerade. Get it together. I think I had like one, wa one water bottle. <laughs> Eat whatever you want. Just quit drinking soda and Monsters. I think you'll be all right. All right. It'll fix you up. Well, I wasn't drinking no soda out in Texas when I got pricked, but I was drinking beer, I guess. Yeah, that was probably too. doing it. Yeah. Oh, hell. All right, oh, then. hell. You got to start taking care of yourself. <laughs> yep. That's what Reed's been telling me. Your what body's a temple, boy. That's true. It is a temple. I ain't seen you it that way. You, you know how I've always looked at boy? it? I've always looked at Yeah, I remember you, baby. Yeah, big Bobby. Yeah, you're looking good. That was pre diabetic Big Bobby. <laughs> Dude, I've always looked at it like, fuck my body. If my body can't keep up with my mind, then what the hell? That's I how I've been looking at it yeah. forever, but <laughs> dumbass. <laughs> Little did I know I was so dumb. Because now I'm hurting so bad, dude. I'm the least flexible person you know. Yeah, can't for touch sure. Oh, I could touch them 
with my knees bent, maybe. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Borderline, but dude, oh man. You put me in one yoga pose, you'll be laughing. <laughs> right. Seriously. Yeah. It's embarrassing. Oh shit, man. Look, I'm all like fake stretching yeah. right now. <laughs> <coughs> I could touch my toes, that's about it. Any of the other weird ones where you know you like do this and this. Oh yeah, yeah. I got like ninety degree flex. That's it. <laughs> that's I'm looking it. at Reed and he's like Fully Reed's laid a flexi out. boy, dude. Yes. Yeah. Reed said he started taking care of himself when he was like 25. Nice. Or maybe a little earlier. He st- really started stretching because he right. had serious back pain. Yep. And it all came from his hips, he said. Yep. And now that's I believe nice. him, dude. Yeah, that's real, dude. Yesterday, I was walking around that job site. At the end of the day, I was like, why am I all stiff on the left side, dude? Like, it's making everything hurt. My neck <laughs> started hurting. My back was hurting. It's Today, all I woke up feeling man. good, though. Good for you. Yeah. Okay. Sleep, eight hours of sleep will do a lot for you, you know? Yeah, and I'm that type of guy. I need that eight hours. It's either I need eight or I need three. Those That's are my good. happy numbers. Yeah. Anything in between is like miserable, groggy, weird. I wake yeah. up all confused. Yeah. It's funny how that works. Six hours sometimes sucks way more than eight hours waking up after. I'll, dude, three hour nap, I can do and then just kill it the next day. Like, I don't, I don't know what it is, but. Pure power. Mind, mind power. I guess. Um. Cause with the with the restaurant shit, I do a lot of nighttime work. So okay. every now and then I'll get like a a remodel, and those are ones that don't close at all. So like you go in at 10 p.m. when that store closes, and you rip out every booth, everything, throw it all in the dumpster, bring in all your new wood, all your new seats, and do it. And then the next night you got to come back and do it again. So damn. Yeah, you get home yeah. at like. You know, seven, eight a.m. Get a three-hour nap in, up by one, and then I, I can't fall asleep once I'm up. So yeah. I'm just sitting there waiting for ten o'clock to roll around so I can go back to yeah. work. Yeah. God damn. But then you get to work, slam a monster, and be chilling. <laughs> just <laughs> running on monster, dude. I used to get a uh, monster before high school every single morning, and then thinking back, I'm like, dude, that's so gnarly. Like, just just such a crazy insulin spike every time you drink that. Like. But they're so delicious, man. I yeah. love monsters. Dude, that one I drank today kind of grossed me out, honestly. Yeah? <laughs> Maybe it's because I'm all of a sudden before or after the coast? thinking yeah. I'm pre-diabetic. Yeah. But, dude, I was like, oh. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't buy it. You know, somebody gave it to me. Oh, so the, like, well, then it's better. It's healthy. I'll, yeah, I'll drink it. If you get it for free, it's, it's fine. It cancels out. All the best shit. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, man. I love that. Yeah, but yeah, Reed's right. He's got a good point. Everything is, con- like, it's all connected, and your hips are fucking huge nobody nobody stretches their hips and their hip flexors i just had to look up what hip flex everybody's talking about hip flexors dude and i'm like what is it you know what is a hip flexor it's just the muscle that flexes your hip it's just the shit that like oh there is when a you, muscle when you raise there, your it's leg up flexor? it's a it's the muscle right here that pulls your shit up mm. and that's what all that this figure four is called a pigeon i could <laughs> you want to yeah talk you could lay dog? you could lay into <laughs> yoga i'm sure you're doing it at 5 45 tomorrow down. morning yes, i heard i'll be doing yoga man uh, what do you want to talk about now? I forget. There was something. Dude, I don't know. We were at your at your crash, uh, but we kind of fast forwarded from getting on BSD to this neck injury. So like early days of BSD, what was the exciting shit that happened? Like what was it like getting on BSD? What was your first trip and et cetera? I think my first trip was to uh, Woodward East. Cool. We like Woodward East. Yeah. I think that was my first trip. I got to hang out with, like, uh, Paley, Alex D. That was, like, my first time meeting them, and Reed was there, too. So That's fine. He was my boy. Yeah. It was pretty easy. Uh, Yeah, we just got to hang out there for a week, film a video. After that, went to South Africa. Damn. Because Reed, you know, he's the safari man, right? So he's laying into Grant saying I got this idea I gotta go to Africa I gotta hang out with the drafts <laughs> and yes. for whatever reason like uh, Rachel shout out Rachel that's Grant Smith's wife okay she mentioned my name and said like why why doesn't Denim go with Reed to Africa <laughs> <laughs> thank you because <laughs> that was amazing like they sent me out there and boom all of a sudden me and Reed are both filming separate videos it's not like we're filming it together. Yeah. It's like we both get to work our, on our own thing. Nice. And we're there with Antoine. He's from France. Yep. He's killing it on the camera. He's got a little DSLR. Well, a couple of them, yep. I guess. But yeah, we were out there for, I think Reed was there for a month. I was there for like two weeks. 
That's bomb. Yeah, just running around. That's where I met uh, Murray. Yeah, Murray's sick. That's where I met Murray. Yeah. That's where I met uh, this cat Kevin and this other cat Brandon Blight. Cool. And Kevin was a photographer for the whole trip. Nice. Absolutely smashing it. And then Blight was helping on the second angles, and Murray is just there. I saw him a couple times. He's yeah. so good, He's dude. so good. It's stupid. It's yeah. fun to watch, but that's, it's stupid. That's, like, my favorite rider. When you talk about somebody coming up or yeah. somebody that's, like, there but, like, kind of low-key, yeah. dude. Murray. Murray Lobza. Oh, yeah. Lobza. And he's a prankster. I think he pranked everybody. At, or I forget. They were telling he me He is a prankster, story. dude. He is a prankster. I'm... Still not got to the bottom of this, but somebody put a brick in my bike bag and I brought it home from Africa. <laughs> nice. Like a literal red brick. I was like wondering why my bag That's was Murray. so heavy. And yeah. it, dude, it had to have been Murray. I hit him up and he still hasn't confessed to it. <laughs> no, I don't know what you're talking about. I met him. He was out here. I met him at a fucking subway randomly. He was with Kramus, I think. But dude's, dude's great. Uh, what was the highlight of that South Africa trip? Besides giraffes, uh, did you get to hang out with giraffes with Reed? Oh, yeah. definitely. Yeah, yeah. No, that was <laughs> that's the best real, part. dude. The giraffes don't even seem real to me. That's like a fantasy animal. Dude, you they're out there. Them. Yeah, yeah. We got to go onto these game farms, and that was kind of the highlight. Like, we got to go to to this private game farm that our homie Rico. Yeah, I think his name's Rico. We'll go his, with Rico and his son Paco. Yeah, they uh, they took us to his uncle's game farm. And they had these safari buggies, and we got to get in this buggy and drive around this who knows how many acres farm just looking for random animals. He's got buffalo. He's got Damn. zebras. He's got all this crazy exotic stuff That's dope. around. But you just got to go find it. And boom, first five minutes, dude, we come up on these drafts, and we're all <laughs> geeked. You're like, no way. The drafts are right there. Boom. Jump right out of the car and boom, they take off running. You can feel their hoof beats in the ground. <laughs> bet, too. They're like, boom, 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 sprinting away from us. It took That's us four hours to find them. <laughs> they good. Four hours after that, we're trying to find them. <laughs> we're rolling around in this buggy, just wasting gas, looking, looking, and looking. And finally, near sunset, we see them. They're way out on the other end of this field. Yeah. But it's like kind of like a bluegrass field. How'd you spot them with it? Got all these Heads trees. Popping out? Uh, they're just like kind of like right. And <laughs> yeah, you can see them. They're giant giraffes, right? They're next long. <laughs> they weren't hidden behind no goddamn <laughs> trees. They were just out there in the field. Yeah. And we're trying to take this buggy through this field, but there's fallen bluegrass trees everywhere. So we're like log hopping, and we got this buggy so stuck, dude, ripped <laughs> the exhaust off of it. Didn't even get the shot. Like we never made it to those Damn. drafts that day. We had to search them up the next day. Defeated by the drafts once again. Yeah, the next day, we actually went to like a different game reserve. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> they had a couple more drafts, and it was kind of on this mountain. And you could take your own vehicle there. So homie had like Toyota Tacoma or something like that. Yeah. We all piled in that thing and went searching for these drafts. It took us a couple hours to find them, but we finally found them. And this time we knew what to do. You know, we were yeah. all like... Be gentle. Tiptoeing. <laughs> <laughs> Reed's coming up on these drafts. He's, Kevin's right there getting all the photos. Yeah. Antoine's getting all the footage. <laughs> Reed's like lacing kendama tricks in front of these drafts. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I'm just sitting there high on mushrooms like, yo, <laughs> thing i've ever done <laughs> that's incredible dude holy shit yeah actually uh i did an interview with antoine in the back of that truck too it's called the worst interview okay i'm so high on my <laughs> <laughs> trying to talk to a camera Hell not yeah. ideal <laughs> no not ideal doing regular shit while you're on streams is something else you have to take like, extra effort to like okay how would a normal person act right now like dude i don't even do shrooms like this this was like the first trip i ever did shrooms nice you know yeah well, that's a hell of a thing to see on while you're tripping. It's just giraffes. That's yeah, fantastic. just wild animals yeah. everywhere. Just and we're just in nature. Like, just rolling around in the back of that truck, dude, looking everywhere. Yeah. It was so <laughs> goddamn fun. That's bomb. That's a hell of a trip. And it was, like, kind of one of the last days of the trip, too. So we had done a lot of our filming. There yep. wasn't much stress left, you yeah. know? That's the way to do it. You can't for be doing sure. that shit at the beginning of the trip. You got to get what you came out there for done. And then you can feel good about the, the other yeah, shit. Yeah, you know? I think that's probably true. Yeah. You don't care. I've done it either <laughs> yeah, way. You yeah. know, I've I've blown it. I've yeah. blown it and I've killed it. Yeah, it's, and that's part of the game, you know? Exactly, you it's it. life. Yeah, tell me about a trip you blew it. Uh, the last Scotland trip, I broke my goddamn neck. That's not blowing it, dude. Yeah, I know, it is what it is, but... Um, I don't know, I've just been on some trips where I just, like, don't feel... 
super right. controlled. Like I just feel loose on my bike. You know, maybe I just got off an injury, so I'm a little timid and this and that. Yeah. And I don't know. Those kind of feel like wasted trips to me. If I don't get a lot of good clips that I'm stoked on, kind of feel, kind of feels wasted. Do you feel like pressure to be denim Cox like at all times and put on? You know what I mean? Like. Uh, Go hard, I there's always a little bit of pressure. Have that yeah, I know I kind of have that reputation. Yeah. So anytime we pull up to a street spot, automatically, like if it's too gnarly for anybody else there, yeah. like all eyes are on me and they <laughs> yeah. want to see me do that. And yeah. I'm like, I'm not fucking doing that, <laughs> yeah. dude. Get the hell out of here. Like, yeah. but that's where Sauce always came in. And he's yep. like, Nah, dude, but you can do that. And I'm like, <laughs> Well, yeah, I can. Like, <laughs> I could see how it's possible. And then I, I, dude, I always end up talking myself into doing some stuff. I love that. God, but, I love sauce, dude. Okay, I, the trip that I really blew it on, which you'll probably say, oh, you didn't blow it, but I blew it. Probably, okay. Dude, I came to Arizona in one year. Okay. There's like 15 of us in two Motel 6 hel- hotel rooms. We drove deep on this trip. Yeah. First day they were actually riding, we go to ASU, and I try this gap ice on a wall rail. It's like a six, flat six yeah, under, yeah, yeah. under like, some cover or whatever yeah garrett reynolds has already done this trick (laughs) i've seen deadline a million times but it's like the fastest clip in deadline you know it's like a two second clip you know easy to miss but security's right there pressuring us saying we got to leave and i'm like ah we'll just come back for it sauce and sauce is like dude you can do this like just do it it's like you know what yeah right let's do it so i go i try to hop into this rail and you know, we'd been smoking weed all morning, so I really wasn't not ready for this shit. <laughs> and I, I, yeah, I sent it. I got the ice pick, but I was never steep with it. I immediately started dropping. Uh-oh. And by the end of that staircase, I was diving into the ground. I knocked both my front teeth out, oh, that's put them that. through my lip. Oof. Yeah, on that's day one crash. of the trip. Yeah. So, yeah, that was a trip I really blew it. Yeah, <laughs> that sucks. I missed the rest of the trip. It was a good video, though. They did oh. good. What's the video? I don't know, Tom Crew in Arizona or something. I gotta rewatch that. Yeah, I've been reminding me of so much shit. Like, I gotta rewatch No Hype. Um, what else? Monster Mash. Gotta rewatch Monster Mash. Shit, you've done a lot of shit, man. Old it's content. Crazy. When? How long is your BMX career? <laughs> BMX career is always a funny thing to me. But how long have you been sponsored? Sponsored guy. Like since twenty. 20- 14. You're coming up on 10 years, dude. I know. Sheesh, it's veteran, wild. Though. I know. Yeah, I know. Dude, I'm <laughs> coming up on 10 years on BSD soon. Yeah, I mean, three bomb. years down the road. That's awesome. It's um, wild. What are you looking forward to now? In the future? Yeah. I'm looking forward to working on this next video with Trent. When he gets back from Scotland, it's on. <laughs> it's on. Oh, yeah. Let's I'll go. be living in Texas. Yes. With all my dirt bikes, with all my BMX bikes. And with mom and dad. And with mom and dad. Hell yeah. And Gunner. It's going down. Gunner's your little brother. Yeah. Cool. He's 19 now, so nice. I could talk some shit to him, drink some beers with him, smoke oh, yeah. weed with him. Everything's For cool. For legal reasons, you can't drink beers with him, but you know what I'm saying? Just kidding. He don't even drink beer, but. but you can drink beers around it. I'm totally kidding, by the way. You can drink beers. <laughs> Dude, they do that and whatever. But yeah, I'm really looking forward to this <laughs> next project. Me and Trent are going to film a half freestyle motocross. What? Half freestyle nice. BMX. Video. Yeah, we should talk about that. Like, you, oh, it's going down, a, dude. I'm grinding every rail you fucking see. Yeah, you're really on it with the with the street <laughs> motocross shit, is it? Really on it is, I don't know. Uh, I don't know you fucking that. did Hollywood High, right? I've done a couple tings. You've done a couple I wouldn't like, say I'm on it, things, on it, but I've done a is couple tings. Is there somebody tings. else going around on a little motorbike and doing I haven't it? seen it. Yeah, <laughs> one of I mean, one, I right? have, you know, back in the day, in this video called 50 Nuts, they're grinding, like, a skate park handrail. Yeah, Skate okay. park flat rails So they stuff. walk so that you could run, you know what I mean? I guess. Yeah, and then you did a tire ride in the... Uh, Total accident. Best bullshit. accident. Dude, best accident what? I ever did that was in my whole accident? life. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's a fantastic... What was that video? The was... Battle of the Brands. Yeah, Battle of the Brands. Dude, Battle of the Brands. <laughs> <laughs> I tried this... I just tried to do a classic crank slide, just like I did on the Hollywood 16. Fuck off. I thought for sure you did Dude, the Dude, I swear to you. No, I was... I, I had done the pegs a couple times, you know? So my body was already used to kind of, like, going straight onto the rail. Yeah. And then this one, like, I went to do the, the crank slide or case slide or you know whatever you <laughs> a tire ride is very far from a, k- a crank arm or whatever the well fuck. dude 
you, you saw my ramp. I had built it out of a jersey barrier that I found in the parking lot. I laid it over and it locked into the spot perfect. I was like, all right, cool. And then I looked around and there was a metal grate on the ground that like filled in the last little four inch training that I needed. And I was like, okay, that'll work. <laughs> and I went and, you know, I did the bump double peg like two times. And then I was like, all right, I'm going to go for this crank slide. Okay. Or I'm going to, I'm going to grind it. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I, that's the only way I can explain <laughs> it. Like, yo, Trent, it. I'm going to do this one i'm gonna crank arm this sucker right <laughs> he's like all right for sure and i go and i i'm coming at it full full confidence you know it's like nearly the last tries i have because my bike's running out of gas it's so far out of gas that i literally had to lay it down on its side so i can get all the gas to go to the side where the pet cock's on yeah and when the gas got there picked it up fired it up i was like okay boom i got a couple <laughs> seconds like let's do it and I went and I tried to do the crank slide, but just literally, dude, perfect tire ride. it's that pop, you know, like yeah. that last little bump jump just put my back tire on there. Perfect. My front tire was supposed to go like crook slide. Basically, I was going to try to crook it, you know, yeah. and it just locked right on <laughs> and I dropped right off. I was, once I got on the rail, I felt like, yo, I'm literally doing a tire <laughs> ride right now. <laughs> Bra, off the end of the rail, boom. Around the corner, oh, I went. Oh shit, dude, that's amazing. And yeah, that's, best accident ever. The question is like, are you? Could bringing, I do it again? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I could do it again. again. Damn right, dude. I did it the other day over in Oregon, but it was on a four-inch wide rail, so it didn't count. And this one, and it was Battle of the Brands was skinnier, right? Yeah, it was classic inch and a half standard or two-inch standard hand round rail, rail, dude. <laughs> round hand <laughs> rail. That's so crazy. That's what I'm saying. I thought I was gonna grind it like this, and all of a sudden I was tire riding that yeah, sucker. That's unreal. But now I know I can do that. So. How do you? Have because the, the the Battle of the Brands was in Texas. That's how you had your motorbike. What the fuck do you call it? Motocross bike, motorcycle. Yeah, pit bike. Pit bike. Okay, you had your pit bike on that trip because your parents lived there, or did you bring it? No, I brought it. You brought it? Yeah. You guys drove out then, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. I, I brought that thing. <laughs> you just bring it everywhere, or what? I mean, when it's required, because I knew there was gonna be, you know, you know, Downside. grind a handrail on anything other than right. a BMX or yeah. you know whatever. Like I was gonna try to do as much stuff as I could on that dirt yeah. bike. You guys killed that trip. It what's, was so uh, fun. Let's oh talk my about God. it a little bit. I mean, what's the best part of that? The best part of Battle of the Brands? Yeah. What was it like seeing Trent do that monster feeble? Dude, best <laughs> with thing. no fucking eyebrows. Dude. Wow. Yeah, Battle of the Brands is crazy because it makes you. You know, you got that book of challenges, right? There's right. a million things you could do. There's a million things you don't have to do. Like, you could throw the book out the window, just like the Fast and Loose yeah. guys, and just do whatever you want and yeah. probably still check off challenges, right? Because yeah. it's all BMX-based. Mm -hmm. You know, there's standard, you know, bar spin up, seven stair, or truck a dirt jump, right. or whatever. All that stuff's in there. So you can kind of, like, pick what you want to do, and there's a million things you can do. Trent decided to shave his eyebrow. Well, shave every hair off his body. <laughs> And, you know, we made him do that because he had the least amount of hair out of any of us. You know, me, Yubi is standing there with his long locks. Yeah. Reed has long locks. Yeah. I'm standing there with my afro. And I'm like, yeah, Trent, this one's you, dude. I look weird with a <laughs> shaved head. And he shaved everything. And it makes him a better guy. <laughs> yeah. And then, yeah, he did that giant feeble. Unreal. Shout out Tristan. Yep. A.K. Gut Stains. Gut Stains. He said he's been wanting to shoot that photo for like 15 years. Or One DX. Like yeah, yeah, he's had that spot in his repertoire forever. Yeah. If you haven't seen it, you should go watch it. Battle of the Brands. Trent's biggest feeble ever. This is a scary, One of the biggest feeble scary ever, thing, thing no? dude. Like yeah. I stood at the top of that stair set and was like, "Yo, I, no, <laughs> like, <laughs> no way would yeah. I." ever do this yeah. and reed was talking about doing the feeble on the woo 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 oh, side and i'm yeah. dude no you way your yeah, yeah you're nuts and then you know it's possible but trent's peg was also not on the front right yeah <laughs> it's just pure commitment yeah to the straight feeble. up battle of brands um there was a, a challenge where you had to do an x up grind with like missing your front left right. peg or whichever side you know so he did the XF pegs earlier that day, and he was all juiced up from it. Immediately from that XF pegs, he's like, let's go do that feeble. Because we had seen it earlier in the week. He's like, let's go do that feeble. Like, yeah. I'm ready to do it. And he did that feeble with no eyebrows and no front peg <laughs> as safety. Yeah. But honestly, if he would have hit pegs on that thing, what would have happened, yeah. right? Yeah, death. <laughs> yeah. But he didn't even realize, like, that's... He, 
he was missing weight on that side and he kept kind of like falling to the right. Yep. And then after the fact, he was like, dude, I wonder what would have happened if I had that peg. Yeah, <laughs> probably would have went perfect. But dude, imagine rolling up to like a, uh, the edge of a three-story building and just saying like, all right, yeah, it's not too far down. <laughs> That's how high it looked yeah. to me. It was three stories, I swear to you. Deadly. What else happened on that trip? Like uh, off bike wise. Off bike? Yeah. What's the like what what's the challenge that you guys saw and you're like, fuck no? Um well there was a challenge that took us quite a while. It was uh thumb gunning beers. Like none of us for whatever reason could stick our thumbs through these low stuff. You guys don't know how cans. to renegade, dude? dude? We were trying. I mean we were trying. We hadn't <laughs> got it down yet. We we're doing these Lone Star cans, they're kinda thick. Yeah. A little Texas, thicker than Coors Light, Texas you know? Dog, you know? Trent had it dialed, dude. He <laughs> did like five, six before <laughs> any of us popped them, but we're on this rooftop. It's like four in the morning, yeah. and we've gone through a full, full like twenty four pack at this point. We yeah. are down to our last twelve, trying to get this laced, and I'm banging the beer on my head as hard as I can <laughs> until it finally like pops a little bit, so I can get my thumb in there. <laughs> but yeah, that was a good one trying to shotgun the beers because it was twenty five extra points for every thumb that went through the can, and we weren't trying to lose no points, yeah. dude. Reed was on it, like Reed wanted would, us to win yeah. so bad. He was like. <laughs> yeah. Yo, we've done this, this, this. Like, we can do this. He's all highlighting. He's like, all right, so we need this kind of spot for this. We need this kind of spot for dude, this. Dude, I love dude. Reed's energy, man. It's yeah. so good. Yeah, shout out Reed. We wouldn't have won without his energy yeah. on that one. Is it win based on, like, is it literally just the points? Or is it, like, do people vote? I, I think I there's a little works. bit of both. But we smashed <laughs> the competition by yeah. several thousand points. <laughs> nobody <laughs> took it serious. Yeah, nobody points. took it serious. We were on it. We were trying to get every challenge checked off. Hell yeah. Yeah, it was, it was a good watch. Yeah, I was doing backflips into the nastiest river ever. Mm-hmm. I am probably, yeah, I'm probably going to oh, die from that river. that was the fucking line, too, because like, you were doing something with the rails, right? Yeah, it was a lot of rails. Yeah. Dude, there's four rails <laughs> and then a river. Yeah. <laughs> At the top, the top rail was like two stairs, and then it was like a ten stair. Okay, so three, three handrails. What did you do? What's I did the like line? a tooth on, on the two stair, right? Yeah. And then an over pegs on the 10 stair but to the left of it was a bank like right on the outside of the rail yeah. so I did over pegs and then just dropped off into the bank like yeah. near the end of the rail and started cranking as fast as I could <laughs> at this rail that was it's a for me a gap over grind right like that's what I wanted to do because the top of the top four feet of the rail was bent in towards the staircase yeah or no, actually, no, I lied. It was away from the staircase. But anyways, you couldn't double peg at the top unless you wanted to get on and then like go around the curve and go yeah, down. So I just, time yeah, that. no, I just cranked into so it as fast as I could. More speed, less doubt, cranking, cranking. And I'm in my boxers yeah. <laughs> at this point. Because <laughs> I knew I was going to go in the river. Naked, so man. I was like, all right, Skating I'll just naked. get in my boxers. Might as well. And I did it over ice. <sighs> Boom. But, yeah, it's like a 12, 13 stairs. Something like it was that. pretty damn good. Right, but I'm, but it's a really long one. It's long, mellow. I'm not used to long, mellow. I'm, I like short, steep rails, you know, because yeah. you don't need to have no balance for that. You just kind of like get in it, you and boom, it you're already yeah. done down before you even get to the <laughs> yeah. bottom. But this one's kind of long, biggest over ice I've ever done in my life for sure. That's awesome. Cranked into it as fast as I could, held it out, and then boom, perfect fly out into the river. <laughs> yes. And dude. like one of the clips or one of the challenges was, uh, film a clip that ends in water. Boom. And then there was another cla- another challenge. It was like do a backflip in or do a line that ends in a backflip or something. I was like, boom, Not both of these twofer. Yeah. We got twofer right here. <laughs> <laughs> boom, with a lot of extra sauce at the beginning too. That's a hell of a clip, dude. So much. I remember so much juice. screaming when I saw that. I was like, God damn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love that clip. That's like don't love clip. that river. Everyone was telling me don't get in the river. I was like, I'm going in that water. You gotta like, do it. Pff. I can see points, you. points on the board. How nasty is it? Uh, How, really it nasty. It like, bad? yeah. Like shit nasty. Oh, I'm, yeah. No, I definitely. There was like a turd floating by me. <laughs> I think it was mud, but I was like, <laughs> yes, "Yo, look! Yeah. There's literally a turd on my bike." <laughs> Everyone's like, "Ugh!" Yuck. No one would touch me for a while. Eh, fuck it. Right after that spot, I went to the aquarium that's right next. It's like right down the road. It's like two minutes down the road. Pedaled to the aquarium and took a shower in the fountain right in front of the place. <laughs> Hell yeah, yeah that's pretty good. I, I did, we did some clip. Uh, I just like kind of like broke up. Reed said, yo, dead on him. And I like looked over and then all of a sudden just <laughs> fell into the pond and just started showering. Nice. 
Yeah, Battle of the Brands hmm. was crazy. Yeah, Battle, of, Battle of the Brands, you guys won deservedly. When was that? Last year? Yeah. Sometime. It's time flies, man. Um, what now? Where do we go from here, Denim? Podcast questions? You want to tell me your Mount Rushmore? My Mount Rushmore? Yeah. Four best people on the thing? Yeah. Put Garrett up there for sure. Okay. That's just rule number one. You put Garrett mm-hmm. there. And then I guess you put Tony Hawk up there too, right? Local legend. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, I would. And then, shit, I'd put my dad up there. Nice. Honestly. Yeah. Good ass guy. And for the fourth one. What's your dad's name? Do Sauce. Do Sauce? <laughs> yeah, I'd put Sauce up there. Oh, Do Sauce. I thought you said your dad's name was Do Sauce. No, get this. <laughs> Get this. My dad's probably going to punch me in the neck for saying it, but I'm going to give you his legal, okay, like, original name. I appreciate that Before he changed it. Okay. It's Dusty Cox. No shit. Yeah. That's a damn good name, man. I'm, that's what I thought, but yeah. he hated it. He didn't like being called <laughs> Dusty Cox, so he changed his name to Zane, which is my middle name. Okay. I'm Denim Zane Cox. My brother's name is Gunner Cox. You guys and, got good names, dude. Yeah, my mom's name is Betty Cox. Betty. Betty Cox. So Zane and Betty. Yup. That's a hell of a Mount Rushmore. It's all all fast. You're the first person to not do it for BMX. All BMX? Yeah. And I'm, I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but wait, I'm not done telling you my family names. Oh, okay. Go. Yeah, no, there's more in Gunner, the family, right? Gunner, 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 Betty, Zane, That's my Gunner, immediate family. Dusty? That's my family. That's okay. who I live with, you know, or mm-hmm. lived with, whatever you want to say. That's my immediate family. And then beyond that, you got my dad's brother. His name is Storm Cox. Damn. Yes. Cool. Storm Cox married this lady called Sharon Cox. Well, wow. Her name's Sharon yeah. Cox now. Yeah. Storm and Sharon Cox made this kid. And what comes after Storm? Thunder. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Thunder Cox rolled through. <laughs> and then after Thunder Cox, Sharon had River Cox. <laughs> And there's Talon Cox, and my grandma's name's Chris Cox. Holy shit, dude. And my, my other uncle's name is Jem Cox. Thunder Cox, dude. Yeah, Thunder Cox is a legend. He actually <laughs> hit me up today. He was like, what's up? You didn't tell me you were in Arizona? I was like, sorry, bro. Let's sorry, just Thunder. do a camping trip. That's amazing, dude. Damn good names in the Cox family, man. That's oh, yeah. the, like, your, your last name is good, and Cox is a good name. Rolls off the tongue. It's just like, in I can picture in middle school, just... Hell. Uh, Cox. Uh, denim know. sucks, Cox. <laughs> <laughs> denim <laughs> leaks, Cox. <laughs> Huge Cox. <laughs> Thunder Cox. Dude. I was like, Fuck. yeah, keep talking. I'll show you my Cox. I'll show you. I swear to God, I'm going to do so many tricks on my bicycle. <laughs> oh, all right. Um. <laughs> so what comes after Storm? Thunder. 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 God. Thunder. Kajiga. Kajiga. <laughs> so your initials is DZC. Simone. That's pretty cool. So but I go by DFC. Oh, dude, what's the what's the brand that I'm thinking of that sounds like that? Did not DZC. D's nuts? Yeah, no. It's like, it's, um, it's gone. Whatever. There's a brand based in California that sounds, that has syllables like that and LBZ. LBZ? Oh, LBZ? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, LBZ yeah. rips, yeah. dude. LBZ is like original dirt bike shit right. back in the 90s, yeah. dude. And then they're Jumping like, trains and doing all this crazy are shit. Are they fucking having a resurgence? I, yeah, like they've been working on it the last couple of years, uh, you know, making new clothes, making beanies and hats and all this stuff, going to every dirt bike event, Hell yeah. trying to get the name back out there. What happened was they sold out to China or whoever, and after, like, 10 years of them selling or whatever they sold to those guys and they said like yo we have the name now so like you can't print for 10 years Woof. yeah so that's kind of like why they went away right because they sold out yeah unknowingly that they're gonna fuck themselves mm-hmm. and then yeah now, now they're coming back, back. they Let's found go. their they opened up their old storage containers and they're selling all the old stuff that's <laughs> and yeah yeah now they're working on a compound out in idaho Maybe they're going to start throwing circle. events and stuff. A compound. Let's go. Yeah, full jumps, full everything. I don't think I've ever been to Idaho. That's one place. Wait, I've been to Boise. But I've been to Boise, too, and Twin Falls, but yeah. just to work on a Krispy Kreme. Yeah, same. It was a work trip. Passing uh, through. Where Where do you want to go that you haven't been on a BMX trip? 
I want to go to Germany really bad. Haven't been there yet. And I want to go to Brussels really bad. Tight. Yeah, Brussels tight. They do a big, big event. I can't Brussels, remember what it's called. But is, I'm stupid. Is Brussels it's like a Belgium, country? I think, maybe. Brussels is Out a there. city in Belgium? I don't know. We're just dumb Americans right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I, I, like, really, I couldn't point out Brussels on a map, to be honest. Yeah, it's in Belgium. Okay. It's out there. It's up there. It's in the. It's in the over there, for it's sure. The, it's overseas, you know. It's right. It's yeah, right it's near the near, near the Amsterdam and the. It's north of France, over there near Paris. Cool. Brussels. Yeah, so I was in Paris, and they were all telling me I gotta go to Brussels. Stein was telling me I gotta go to Brussels because they do. Brussels. Yeah, they do some big event. I was like, damn, I gotta get there. Yeah, I so that's go on to my Europe, list for sure. Period. And then uh, I've already been to Thailand once, but I did not go there with a motorbike, so mm. that's key. Up, yeah, yeah, that's key. Reed wants to do that trip, and I'm sold. I'm taking the 110 to How Bangkok. How are you gonna fly dude. with the? Oh, I'll do it. With the shit. I'm gonna do it. You just make it happen. I got two bike bags. And you break it all down and. Why not? It? I know how to work a tool. Yeah, you do. I thought about. I've <laughs> thought about this so hard. Yeah. <laughs> so a pit bike is 100. No, yeah, 140 pounds dry weight. Okay. So drain the oil, drain the gas. It's yeah. about 140 pounds. Okay. I could split that in two bike bags and just pay the overweight fee, you know? Yeah. 100 pounds each. I support your decision Put the motor in one, yeah. put the frame in the other. You know, just mopping around wheels, Thailand. Dude, just imagine mopping bike. around yeah. Thailand with four pegs. Yeah, that's incredible. Because I don't think I could find a KX110 out there. I don't. They're all about yeah. mopeds out there. That yeah. was, dude, it's, Thailand was so of. cool. Yeah. Like, everywhere we went. We would do like 25 miles a day, but we didn't have to pedal none of it. Cause you just every stoplight, yeah, you just grab on a moped, and they're hyped <laughs> about it. They're like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Boom, <bah. laughs> two yes. blocks, three blocks, you know, whatever, till the next red light, and Fuck then yes. at the red light, you just run through it and you know pedal to the next red light where you actually have to stop, and you're like, okay. New, new moped, new guy. Here we go. That's See if wild. we can win. <laughs> or if you're not grabbing them, then you're grabbing those tuk tuks, you know, the little tourist yeah, 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 go kart yeah. thing. Yeah. Grabbing uh, those or whatever. What were you doing out there? BSD trip. Cool. With Sam Jones and Alex D and Reed and I think, yeah, I forget who else. Who is the best biker on BSD? That's a tough one. It's stacked. Yeah, damn. I mean, you got Alex D. He's an X Games podiuming. Yeah. But then you got Chris Kyle, who's literally riding a skate Skate park in the sky. (laughs) (laughs) So it's like, I don't know. They grew up, so they're like hand in hand. I wonder who wins in a game of bike between Chris and Alex. Probably Alex. Yeah. I would think Alex. Chris can't do all the technical shit that. Yeah, if you put a flat rail in there, then Alex definitely. But it's just flat ground. It's real life, man. Alex is nuts with it. It's crazy. Robot. Yeah, robot. Yeah, he's probably the best. That's a solid answer. For sure. I remember uh, them coming out here and being super young. They were like 16 or 17 out here uh, staying at the Gully House, and I got to meet them, and they're just little shits, little with their fucking accents and everything. Were they even <laughs> on BSD like, back then? I think maybe it was the be- Yeah, I want to say yes. Beginning I, of? Yeah. Like, it, and the trip was uh, Dave Sowerby was there, and I, that's when I learned that you don't put red wine in the fridge. I had never known that. And then my uh, my dad always put red wine in the fridge because he doesn't give a shit and he's old and he's just like, I like it cold. And I was like, all right. So then I'm over at their house partying and I put the red wine in the fridge and Dave fucking scolded me so hard and I'll never forget it. And his fucking accent. I, what's, I forget what accent he has, but just a very scolding, just like, Scottish. I'm, di- I'm disappointed in you. Really? <laughs> wow. Shit. I was like, God damn, okay. Yeah, he doesn't drink very much anymore, I don't think. Yeah, that's kind of how it goes. <laughs> We drink a lot, and then you realize, okay, that's that's not sustainable. <laughs> Don't need <Yeah>. that. <laughs> yeah, after Sabrosa, dude, I kept the party going, except I was just alone in my room keeping the party going. That's no good. Yeah, no, I get out of there. This is simply no good. It's yeah, nice. I stick to beers pretty much. I've been messing with tequila lately. I love tequila, dude. Dude, lately I've been on the tequila. Yeah, it's like, bomb. You know, just every time we go out, one or two shots with a couple beers. Maybe three or four shots. Yeah. <laughs> it depends on who's around you. Yeah. <laughs> like we just went to Devin Smiley's bachelor party the other day, and me and Sean were just plowing tequila yes. shots at some bar that I've never been to. Hell yeah. <laughs> some bar that Ethan couldn't get into because he forgot his ID. Damn it, Ethan. I had an expired ID, but I brought my passport. That'll do it. 
Yeah, it's yeah. Good. I remember Lashawn always using his passport instead of his ID, and I thought that was so cool back in the day. I was like, wow, that's cool. You just, I, I didn't realize. I just went to a party, like a, so I work out at this place called F45. They had a little pool party thing on Saturday, and I brought a bottle of tequila as like a gift, and then I became the tequila guy, like which is never a good move. Like, you guys want to shot of tequila? And the next thing I know, like every little group of the party would come up to me and be like, let's do a shot of tequila. And the next thing I know, it's like 15 shots of tequila, and I... Like, I would never make it there. I went from being in their pool to like wake up in my bed and I was like, word? <laughs> what the, what happened? For sure. <laughs> Last night was sick. Yeah, cool. All right. Dude, no, I can't even get there. Like if I'm getting close to blackout, I'm puking. I, I, yeah, I got sensitive stomach, dude. It just happens. That I don't way. know how it works, man. Your brain just is like, all right, you're you're not gonna want to watch this part. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like uh, um yeah, fucking eight. All right. Uh, the other questions about Rushmore. Uh Writers that I don't know about that I should know about. Oh man, if you don't know about this guy, you should know about this guy. His name's Gio something, Giovanka maybe. He writes for We the People. Let's see here. Yeah, Giano Vaca. Giano. He's on We the People, dude. Every clip he posts gets me hyped. It's all a bunch of tech nose manual stuff, and that's I think why it gets me hyped because it's like oh, he's oh nice. I can never do. I can never do. Dude, I suck at manuals so bad. Let's go. Yeah, what do you suck at? That you well Manuals, any form of like balance, nose manual, manual, yeah. dude, so bad at it. <laughs> like embarrassingly bad. If you ask me to do a hop three, you're gonna watch me do a hop two seventy. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the things I'm really bad at. It's funny because you're I can so nollie good. three, but I cannot do a three like a hop three sixty is embarrassing. It <laughs> is really embarrassing. Hey, we all have our shit, you know, that we struggle with. Dude, yeah. I watched that one guy with one leg do a better three than me the other day. <laughs> like really good. Yeah. That thick guy with one leg, I forget his name. Julian. No, not him. The other guy. Thick guy with one leg. I don't know a thick guy with one leg. I think he's from Argentina or somewhere in South America. He's really good. Yeah. Impressive, dude. Nice. I can't, yeah, if we take for granted that we got all of our limbs, you know? Yeah, right. Oh, you got to count your blessings. Oh, I do. Uh, so you would you would be better at balance tricks. What's something mm, that you used to be able to do that you can't do now? I just made that question up. Mm. Have you lost any talents? I did a bar of ice once. What? Yeah, I've never done it again. But <laughs> I was at Battle of Hastings all hyped up. <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, this perfect bank to A-frame, boom. Bar ice. Nice. And I've never done it on a down rail or anything. Like so I, I need to get that one. I remember it. I think. I think I remember that. And I ice. used to be able to nollie three over stuff. That's pretty cool. Like straight up, like, you know, a n little bench at school. Yeah. Classic. Sit down, take attendance. I used to be able to nollie three over that thing. That's pretty wild. Not anymore. I can't nollie three, period. I now I can nollie three, like, parking curbs and stuff like that. We can get it done. I used to be able to do fakie manuals. Now I'm all scared. Oh, shit. On I've free fallen back too much. Yeah, free coaster. Yeah. I can never do that on a cassette. It's a it's a real son of a bitch. You got to keep practicing those. I hate them. I, I think them. I might go back to a cassette, dude. I'm tired of going backwards. Yeah. It's dude. been a while. Free coasters are dead. It's over. Well, Just I got <laughs> that BSD Revolution hub, so it kind of feels like a cassette. So. How so? It's got no, no uh, slack in it. But it's a free coaster. Yeah. Do you have your bike wild. No, I don't. Yeah. I want to try that. I just flew in from Texas. So, so like, I didn't bring if it. you're going backwards, there's no slack? No. If you're going forwards, like, there's no if slack. If you're going forward, it feels like a cassette. But if you're going backwards, it and you... It feels like a free coaster. With the... How much? Like, you Because I use pedal pressure to, like, spin out of fakie. So like, you can. That's interesting. You can. We might have to try this hub Yeah, out dude, honestly. Yeah. That's interesting. It's pretty weird. Like, you could air up a quarter, right? You know how on normal free coasters, if you went to air a quarter and do, like, a manual tap or whatever, you yeah. couldn't use pedal pressure right. at all? Yeah. Dude, you could land and do a wheelie across a quarter and then drop That's in if you wanted dude. to. I wonder how that shit works. It's weird. Hmm. Feels normal. Hmm. I like it. Uh, anybody else that I don't know about that I should? Uh, well, you know about Murray, and that's, like, my, that's the my guy. One. Yeah. John, okay. Those are, uh, wait, what's that dude's name again? Gio Vaca. Gian, Giano Vaca. Giano. Giano, what a name. Yeah, he's goat. Um, I think that's good, dude. Yeah, I'm cool. Anything else you want to say? Um, thank you, BSD, for supporting me through all this, all these years. All this shit. Sending me all over the damn world and... 
Uh, I hope everyone's excited for the half moto, half pit bike video that me and Trent are going to make. I know I'm excited to start filming it. Uh, I'm excited to get out to Texas. I think I'm going to move there in the next couple of years. Yeah. Or, I mean, in the next couple months. That's a big difference. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Next couple months, yeah, it's go time. Boom. Time to get out there and start building a, in Austin? building a life. Yeah, right outside of it. Sick. Yeah, I'm going to be I probably like, like 35, 40 minutes yeah. from Trent. Austin is a new California. Agreed. It's going down. Yep. All right, well, that's it. You heard it here. Denim's moving to Texas. All right. Thanks, Later. thanks for watching. See you next week. <laughs>